What's up guys and girls, Bulk Brogan back here for some more racing life in Automobilista 2. Welcome back to the stream. It's been a while. Um, Bulk has had a little bit of a vacation holiday, um, mostly enforced due to sickness, but championships don't wait for sick people. There are two championships up on the line today. We've got a GTE decider and we have a DPI decider. Now, that's just a random collection of letters for those who don't know that. Um, two ongoing championships in Automobilista 2 come to a, come to a conclusion today. I am um, maybe in with a chance of winning the GTE championship, but the DPI championship is, is um, it's not so likely. We've got tin tops and prototypes. Four races coming up, two races in each. We've got no sponsors to decide. We've got no admin to do. We don't need to buy any cars. We don't need to you know, sign any leases, don't need to do anything apart from just go and race, go and drive today. And maybe, just maybe, at the end of it, in four races time, there could be an offer from a Formula One team for next season. Just putting it out there, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know where I am. I'd be a good fit at that team, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Sticky, JD F, Ricardo, and Streamlabs, and anyone who was just lurking in the background, or if you're watching the, watching this on the replay, great to see you. So, um, yeah, let's just get stuck straight into it, shall we? Version 1.7 of Racing Life in Automobilista 2 means you can now update the profile picture, and that was one of the first things I did when I downloaded this update, so... It's Bulkception. I'm here, and I'm up there in two places at the same time. But yeah, as you can see, we've got uh, 66 races under our belt. That'll be 70 by the end of today's stream. 20 pole positions, 34 podiums, and 23 wins. So, uh, a slightly better pole-to-win conversio uh, conversion ratio than Charles Leclerc, shall we say. 56 fame, with 866 dollars in the bank. Now, if we have a look at the competition page and we scroll back to the start of the Formula 1 season, we need 65 fame to land the Formula 1 drive. So, the competitions that we're in at the moment are the IMSA prototypes. We can get up to a maximum of 70. If we go into the GTEs, we can get up to a maximum of 75. So, if we do alright, if we do well, then <laughs> it's looking very likely indeed, but let me just point out what is coming up today because it's not that straightforward So in the GTE championship, we've got a race at Virginia International Raceway a 45 minute race and then the season finale Is at Monaco and that's going to be a sunset race Whoever decided this schedule <coughs> Ricardo <coughs> Ricardo <laughs> Monaco is a season finale in the World Endurance GTE Championship. That's going to be absolutely ridiculous. Um, and if we have a look at the DPIs, what's coming up in here? Well, round 5 is also going to be at Virginia. And I have it on good authority that it's going to be raining. Not that I would know, not that I've looked ahead and done a practice session in each, just to make sure that everything works in the new 1.5 Automobilista 2 update, which is absolutely fantastic, by the way. Uh, this is my first time driving this update in any kind of extended session. I've done a few laps here, a few laps there. Um, I'd, well, I've done about two hours all up across various different cars and tracks, but I haven't done any extensive test sessions. So I'm really looking forward to seeing exactly what version 1.5 of Automobilista 2 is about today. It's meant to be quite good, and we'll find out very shortly. So yeah, round five of the IMSA Prototype Cup is also at Virginia, same as the GTEs. And then in similar fashion, we're going to have a season finale in the DPI uh, series at Long Beach. And that's a night race. So we've got... Basically, we're going to do GTE, IMSA, GTE, IMSA. That's the order we're going to do the races in today. So Virginia, GTE, Virginia, IMSA... Then we're going to do Monaco GTE and Long Beach IMSA. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> what a way to finish these two seasons. So, let's just have a double check on everything. I've showed you the stats. I've showed you where we're up to. These are all the trophies. Um, that's potentially at the clubs today. We'll see. And that one is also potentially. We've got two, two more trophies in the cabinet today. Uh, finances are looking healthy. It is what it is. Uh, we don't need to, you know, the garage is looking fine. 
everything's looking fine. Our sponsor, brand new sponsor, Orlan, is uh, with us for the next 10 races. So that will definitely cover the start, uh, well, these two seasons and then the start of maybe the Formula 1 season in the next stream. Uh, if we finish in the top three, basically finish on the podium, we get an extra $12,000. And if we finish the race full stop, even if we DNF, well, if we do the race, we get $1,500. So, I mean, it's, it's a decent earner. Yes. So, let's switch over to Automobilist 2 mode. And let's have a look at the championship in the GTEs, because that's what we're going to be doing first. When it loads, is it going to load? It's going to load. So, I'm currently... I'm kind of doing all right. I've got a, I've got a 90 point, um, 90 point accumulation in the standings. Mark Bell is second on 57 points. So this one is ours to throw away. But if you know anything about Buck Brogan, think back to the very start of the career in the uh, Copa FL Classic cars. I had a 24 point advantage heading into the final race of the season, and I still lost it by one point. Yeah, it's 25 points from winning there. So Captain Bottle. I'm not going to say I'm not going to say this is a sure thing because I definitely have the potential to throw it away. But a uh, you know a 33 point advantage with two races to go is not bad at all. So we're going to do that race first. But if we have a look at the DPI Championship, that's a different story entirely. We are way back. We're on 40. <coughs> excuse me, 42 points compared to the championship leaders, 80 points. So I mean it's pretty close between me and Brian Scott for fourth. There's an outside shot of maybe getting second in the championship, but Lee Chorley is running away with the DPI championship. So I, I don't think we're going to get the DPIs, but you never know. If we have a couple of good races, we could bump it up to 92 points with two wins. If Lee doesn't score any points, then that's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So yeah, championship hopes today are going to be in the form of a GTI. So let's get started, shall we? There's no time like the present. Let's just get stuck straight into it. Mr. Bishy, hello. Ah, oh, Ricardo Pombera, I'm still running on the old requirements. So when it updates to the new season, it will actually update to 70 fame. Okay. <coughs> well I better get I better get cracking then. I better I better do alright in this GTE championship. I need all the fame I can get. Need all the fame I can get. Sticky! Yeah, Castrol hat indeed. Oh look at this. Rain. So 15 minute qualifying session with a 45 minute race, mandatory pit stop. So let's just tank it. Actually, let's just reset to defaults. What well, default set? I don't know why it's got circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia rallycross in there. But we want, uh, we want wet tires. And we're going to take it out on a full tank just to get used to it. There we go, just to get used to the car. There's got to be a more graceful way of doing it than that. <laughs> so, no time like the present. 14 minutes remaining in the session. Thank you again for tuning in. Great to have you here. If you do enjoy today's stream, don't forget to leave it a like. Say hi in chat, and uh, yeah, let's go and get let's go and get a couple of championships. Well, I mean, it's one way of uh, testing out the new uh, physics, isn't it, Mr. Bishy? It always rains on bulk, so uh, why would it be any different for these? So let me just reset my VR view, so I can actually see you guys in chat. There we go. Right. Yep, everything's good. Engine on. Ignition. Pit limiter on. Let's get that wiper on. Where, where's my button gun? Your exit is clear. Don't cross the line. There we go. We've got 30 minutes to settle up. The brake temperatures are low. We need to get some heat into them. Nice and easy does it, first time out of the pits. Literally my first time driving the new physics in wet conditions. So this is as much of a learning experience as anything. Done a couple of hours in the dry so far, across various tracks and cars. Also just to make sure that all the 
the settings still, you know, work, all the mappings are still correct. Did you know that Automobilista 2 has a great tendency to uh, reset everything to scratch when it updates? So, you know, the last thing I want to do is go straight into a stream. And none of my buttons work. Feels absolutely fantastic. The car definitely feels so much more planted. Make sure the engine mapping is on high. Oh, a bit of a wobble on the straight there, a little bit of aquaplaning. Didn't see any standing water, but the car got quite loose. JK, good to see you. Miss Lima, good to see you. Miserable weather conditions here. The Virginia International Raceway, first lap out of the pits in qualifying. Rain coming down at 40%. At least it's consistent rain. It's not like changeable weather conditions, you know? Nice and gently does it on the brake. This car doesn't have ABS, so any kind of lockups are going to be incredibly punished. Four. 153.44 for the leader. Oh, it feels absolutely fantastic, this. Ooh, got a bit of standing water then. Spend the riz. There we go. Whew. Great work, Reza Studios. Very good first impression. Those S's are so tricky, little lift out. Oh, that's a bit too far over to the left there. That's going to be off off the track on the right. Ah, I got myself way out of shape on entry there, just carrying way too much speed about three corners before. The car in front has just done a 153.62. Didn't invalidate the lap though. But it's not going to be a very good lap time. All right, down. Ten minutes to go. That's, but that's definitely a case of one error compounding itself and just getting more and more exaggerated as the lap goes on, you know? Need to take a little bit less speed into the... Remember that for next time round. I haven't got much time. This is a combined practice and qualifying session. Nice and early turning for that final corner there. Deceptively early turn in there. So 153.4 to beat. Way off. A little bit of a lock up there. You're locking your front right. Keep it in fourth. Nah, third was better last time round. Dropped too many revs there. Looks like the rain might be getting a bit heavier. It's definitely got a lot mistier. The spray coming up off the track surface there. Alright, so this is where I made that mistake last lap around. Sector 1 is 0 0.29 off the pace. Need to have a little lift here. Keep it to the right hand side. Same again. Need to have an even bigger lift. Well, at least I kept it on the track then. Nice late turn in here. Straighten it up. Get the power down. That's it. Just a bit of restraint at the apex means I can carry more speed on the way out. Early turn in. 
patience, get the power down. That's it. Ooh, that is interesting news, Mr. Bishy. Silly season, summer break in full effect already. Okay, this is 2.9 seconds up. Where is this going to put me? P15. Not great. Sector 3 is 0.34 off the pace. 15th. Okay, plenty of time to find. Just need to push it a little bit further. Being very cautious in half of these corners. Maybe a little bit of rear bias will help on the brakes. Snappy on the rear there. Short shift to third to get the power down. Little lift to get the car turned in. That's it. Two point, uh, point two 0.28 up at the moment. Okay, lift time. And then get it into the apex here, down to fourth. That's it. Much better. Is going round, but I think I saved it. Yep. 0.6 up now. That's good. This might get us into the top 10. I need to find 1.3 though to get anywhere near pole position. Only six minutes left in the session. That's not many laps to do something about it. Your brake temps look good. Sector 2 is 0 0.30 off the pace. Gained a lot of time in that corner because I braked way early last time around. Okay, this is 1.1 up. I had a really good final sector. This is going to put me near the top. P8. Good lap. Oh, not really. P8. Sector 2 is 0. 0.30 off the pace. Sector 3 times quick. You've just oh. Overcooked it, overcooked it into turn one, round it goes. Too heavy on the brakes there. Let this guy go through. Okay, Dan, five minutes to go, five minutes left. So realistically, maybe two or three laps left in the session here. Okay, now I'm down to ninth position. Definitely losing a lot of grip here. So I'm on a 153.6. Wow, that's crazy. Two tenths separating the top eight at the moment. That's, that's some V8 supercars level competition here. Incredibly close grid. Now I know I can find two tenths of a second over the course of this lap. I just need to actually do it. Aldrink, good to see ya. This is a wetter track than Spain. And the best part about these weather conditions is the uh, DPI race that we're doing next. Well, I mean, it's actually the two classes of racing on the same day in game. So these weather conditions are what we're going to have for the DPI race that's coming up next as well. Sector 2 is 0.9 off the pace. Let's rack it up here. Let's get a good exit. Got this lap and one more. Got somebody harassing me behind. Getting close. Let's try and not break too late into the first corner this time. P9. Sector 3 is a second off the pace. Very slidey. Miss that apex by a mile. I think I'm actually being a bit too a bit too much energy into the rear tires. Yeah, the rears are sliding all over the place here at the moment. The temperature is creeping up as well. 
53. Gonna let that guy through. Clear to the right. Sector 1 is 0.5 off the pace. This lap's already a right off. I'm gonna put that bias a little bit back towards the front again. Okay, now I'm getting big understeer, so I've got outside track limits. too much heat in the rear, not enough heat in the front. The car is not progressing in a nice direction throughout the course of this stint. As the fuel burns off in this Just Porsche. Two left, two minutes to go. Yeah, feeling better, old rink. I've still got a little bit of a sore throat going on, but physically, yeah, like I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm not sick sick anymore. I've just got the lingering effects. Tires are cold. Sector two is 3.6 seconds off the pace. Okay, so this is going to be it. Last lap, sh last lap shootout coming up. Got one chance as I cross the line with less than one minute thirty to go. Guy heads coming into the pits. That's good. <clears throat> nice clear track out the way here. Okay. I might have to go quiet for this. Sector 3 is 1.1 off the pace. off that curb there. Got a good exit though. You're a tenth off in sector one. Tents down, it's not looking likely because I was really strong in the last sector on my previous lap, so I'm gonna have to have an absolutely banzai final couple of corners, see if I wanna take any more positions on the grid, try and get better than ninth. Oh, I completely lost my reference point there. Visibility is terrible at the moment, it's so hard to catch the apex. It's going to push wide onto the grass. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Ninth on the grid then, but incredibly close. Incredibly close. Less than two, well, just over two tenths off the pole position time. Oh, this is going to be an intense race. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Definitely on a knife edge, that car. So you can see here, look, pole position 153, 4, 153, 4, 153, 5, 5, 5, 6, 6, 6, 6. It's incredible, incredible. So let's do some quick maths then. So if I am running... Okay, so we've got 45 minutes times 60 seconds, which gives us 2,700 seconds. Divide that by, say, 1 minute 53s. Say 1 minute 54 in the race, so that is 116. 23 laps, say 24 laps, times that by 5.8 litres a lap is 139, say 140 litres, that's what we're going to need. That's the end of the session, E9, 45 minutes, E9. Oh, change of weather conditions though, it's now got light rain and it's damp. So... Still going to go on wet tyres. Still going to go on wet tyres. <coughs> because I think that's the safest option. It's definitely not dry. If the rain's still coming down, wet tyres is the way to go. But I'm going to have to be very careful that I don't overheat them here. So I'm going to need 140 litres of fuel. Probably a little bit more. Now that... um. 
probably a little bit more now that I am running in dry conditions. I'm going to be using more fuel. The time's going to be going up. So, let's create a new pit strategy. Let's call it wet. Uh, let's call it fuel only because we might be able to make the wet tires last the whole distance. No mandatory. Actually, no. There is no mandatory stop in this series. I don't. I don't think so. So, uh, so let's just call it fuel only. So we change tires. Nope. And we want to put, so what's 140 take, let's say 50. Let's put 50 litres in. Just to be safe. And let's turn off the damage repairs. Because otherwise we'll be in the pits for a substantial amount of time for stuff that doesn't need to be fixed if we do get any engine or brake damage or anything like that. Okay, so fuel is just that. Fuel only. Now, if we want to change it over to dry tyres... If it dries out during the course of the race, we're going to put, uh, same again, 50 litres of fuel in the car. We're going to change all tyres to dries, softs, because they'll definitely last the race. So soft tyres. And again, we want to turn damage off. So that covers us in both eventualities. Uh, it is not plus one, so it's 45 minutes as is. So 45 minutes and then that's it. No plus one lap in this uh, in this championship. So, right. So we want to... Something we learnt in the last stream as well is your default strategy. I thought I was putting dries on last time and put me on wet again. So I want to set the default strategy as just fuel for now. And then if it dries out, which I think it might do because there's a few clear spots in the sky there. Although it is still ra yeah, it's still raining just a bit. Hmm. We'll see how we go. But definitely going to need... Yeah, there's the rain coming back. We're definitely going to need 50 litres of fuel regardless. Right, I think I'm set. Yeah, okay, I think I'm set. Right then, first race of the stream, starting in ninth position, starting on wet tyres with uh, pit strategy. Just putting fuel in if it stays wet. Okay, yep, okay, just fuel. We can make the wets last the whole race. Wish me luck. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, Leave it a like, say hi in chat, and uh, stick around because this is the first of four. Okay, rolling start ninth for the championship. Just got to score as many points as possible. Try and consolidate the lead over Mr. Mark Bell, who is starting directly ahead of us in the blue car. Here we go. B9. Okay, Dan, be ready. Watch for the lights. And we're off. Thanks, Sticky. Thanks, Sean. Car one. Nice and easy into turn one. Left side. Three wide. You're on the right. Still a bit of standing water left there. Side. Clear left. <clears throat> now, this is going to be a great test because historically, <clears throat> the AI have not been exactly okay. fair in mixed conditions. They've always had a bit of an advantage when it's been slippy. On your left, clear left. Ooh, very slidey there. They got the power down quite easily. Now pulling away a bit on the straight hits. Oh, it's looking kind of dry. Right side. He gave me a nudge then. Right. He touched me on the rear and it stopped the car from turning in. You're out of track limits there. Cheeky from the AI. Dropped a few spots as we ran off track there. On your right, clear right. Down to 11th. Maybe they have got a bit of an advantage on me at the moment. They seem to be powering away. Have I got the engine mix turned down? Nope, engine's on high.
right side. Clear, clear to the right. right yeah, side. wow. Clear right. They got so much more grit right than side. me. Well, it's safe to say that 1.5 Automobilista 2, the AI, is still not very well balanced in mixed conditions. Clear right. B14. All right. Hold your line. Clear right. Got that guy around the outside, though. Ooh. Seems to be getting a bit of speed in the first sector, where the track is wet. Unless these guys started on dries, which would be why they've got such an advantage in the other sections of the track. Maybe these people are on dry tyres. I think these AI might be on dry tyres, you know? When there's a bit of spray here, I seem to catch up a bit. Those temps are getting a little bit high as well in the t in the in the rears. I need to try and calm that down a bit. We're now holding station in 13th position. Mark Bell is well and truly into the point, so this is exactly what I said didn't need to happen. Yeah, that's that's got to be looking out down. Left side, still there. Clear left. On your that was a bit ambitious. Left, they, they, right this has got to be dry. This has got to be dry tires. There surely, and the rain is the rain's still coming down, but uh, and there's still wet sections of the track. It's it's risky. It's risky to come in for dry. Three years, three point two seconds. Right side. Still there. Clear right. You're clear. Because look in this section. I've got so much more grip. I'm pulling away from them. Not there. Wow. Just Porsche things. Not quite sure how I saved that. Exclamation mark, big wiggle in chat for that one. Yeah, we're down in 14th though, losing a lot of time. Six seconds off the pace. The gap to Mason in front is now 0.9. True old ring. I reckon that's the rally experience coming in handy there. Closing the gap. It's now not if I come into the pits now, it's going to be way too early in terms of making it to the end on fuel. Rear temperatures. They're getting hot. Yeah, this section of the track is dry, and look at them. Got so much more grip. Right side. Keep it steady. Rewide to right. Far right. Oh, I've definitely got Still definitely there. got TC on sticky. I can just hold him into turn one. On your right. Right side. We're right. V14. Car right. Rewide. You're on the left. Car right. We're right. That lap time was 1.53. Right side. Clear. Clear to the right. That's your fastest lap. Yeah, look. They, they've got to be on dry tyres. They're really struggling in this section. I don't know. Is it worth coming in for dries? I'm going to have to make a second pit stop if I do. Do I just hold on and wait for the race to come back to me? Okay, Dan, our fuel window will open after 13 minutes. It closes at about 32 minutes. Just come in for the early pit stop and have a fight back. What do you reckon?
Can I even make the rear tyres last that long? <laughs> Uh, these cars do have TC sticky. It's ABS you're thinking of, I think. Definitely not have ABS. Your left side tyres are running hot. Oh, I'm not sure what the forecast is, Sean. It looks like it's going to be pretty consistent, you know. Left side, clear to the left. Far right, three wide, two right. On your left, clear left. Very opportunistic move from the AI, but that's because I was just so much slower. Okay. Okay, it's top requested. Miller is leading the race. Look out for the pit speed limit. Alright, I'm going on to dries. What a terrible. Terrible opening stint. <laughs> I got spun around. Gotta be super careful coming out the pits now. It's gonna be wet in the first section. We don't go, go. Am I gonna have enough fuel to make it to the end? Can I stretch it out? All clear. Push now. You're running last. Your tire temperatures are good. Your brakes are cold. We need to get some heat into them. See, look, it's slippy. There's the moisture. McIntyre is now leading. Yep, there's a lot of moisture there. It just doesn't turn in. Oh, wow. Yep, standing water pushed me straight off. Looks like that was outside track limits. so treacherous. You don't see the AI okay, having these kind of wobbles. We have to short shift it here, I think. That's what makes it a little bit unbelievable. Is the fact that the AI don't seem to have too many problems in these conditions over the... Uh, over the wet weather. So target lap time is in the 1 minute 50s. I've got to get into the 1 minute 49s to try and beat the guys at the front, but let's see what we can do. Like JK says, mega recovery drive needed. Gotta stay off the wet stuff. Okay, quiet time. It's quiet time. Let's let's get a lap on the board. Let's see where the grip is. Too much speed going in. The car is now trashed. You've got some serious suspension damage there. Ah, uh, I think I might have to. I think that might be it. I think that's going to be it. It's just going to. It might have to be a DNF. This. I'm. 
Oh, I'm way down on engine power now. Oh, this might be a DNF. I'm going to do one more lap and see if the car is actually drivable. Because even with that bin, oh, that was a two-minute one. I'd seen that I came out of the came out of the pits, didn't I? No, I didn't come out of the pits. That was the first flying lap. That. Yeah, the car's pretty horrid, as I'm sure you can appreciate. Garrido, 48.00. And the leaders are only getting faster. <laughs> Just carried too much speed into... Is it Oak? Oak Tree Corner, is it? I think that's what it's called. <clears throat> and it's exactly what I said in the intro. Captain Bottle. Good job I had such a big advantage in the points. I think even with a DNF, I'm still going to be leading the championship. Such is my advantage. Yeah, with the damage, I'm not even beating my times on the wet tyres. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to retire the car, people. Yeah, look at that down the straights. If I pit, I'm going to go a lap, lap down. And actually, I'm not going to make it to the end on fuel anyway. Yeah, box to retire the car, box to retire the car. No point continuing in this one. Oh well, unfixable suspension damage. How much? Yeah, because I disabled damage repairs. But let me do that now. I've enabled it halfway through the pit stop. Nope, that's it. I'm going to have to go around again. Yeah. All right. That's the end of that race. Retire to pit box. Okay, that's the end. Let's get out of here. Try and forget this one, eh? <laughs> Skip to end. Okay. Well, Mark Bell didn't get that many points in that race. So I suppose that is my saving grace. But that is not going to do me any favours for my fame whatsoever. <laughs> um, repairs would have been an option, Sean, but I didn't enable them before I came into the pits. Uh, because it was disabled in my preset. So that was effectively... I would have had to have gone round again and it would have been another lap down. So, uh, yeah, early B is for bulk indeed. I could restart that race, but to be honest with you, that kind of feels like cheating. Because I know what to expect, and I know if I restarted that race, I would choose a different set of tyres. <coughs> if I restarted that race, I'd go on to dry tyres, so I'm not going to do that, that's not fair. Um, I'm just going to take that on the chin, I stuffed up. I've made too many mistakes, I got the tyres wrong, and I got thoroughly outcraft, uh, outcraft, outclassed. That's just part of the racing, it is! There's an option in Racing Life for DNF, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exercise that option today. So, uh... <coughs> yeah, Bulk Brogan retired, plus eight laps. Oh well, it was not meant to be, so let's continue, and uh... Let's just get confirmation of the points. So, yeah, Mark Bell only got six. So, let's have a look. Actually, hang on. I just won the championship. Because it's 25 points for a win. And Mark is 70. 27 behind. <laughs> 
<laughs> what an an what an absolutely anticlimactic way to win that championship. DNF'd, retired from the race, and Mark Bell failed to score enough points. So I just won the I just won the GTE championship with a DNF. Early beers indeed, Mr. Bishy. Okay, well there we go. <laughs> Bulk Brogan. <laughs> I mean, that figures. Borg Brogan is a GTE champion of the world in the in the most anticlimactic way possible. <coughs> <laughs> so let's go back to racing life and let's plug those results in, shall we? Oh, well, there we go. So uh, advance GTE qualification result was ninth. Race result was. Let's have a look. How many cars are in the race? Was it 24? 24. So 24th and a DNF gives me, uh, well, 0.07 fame. So that might actually be a massive problem. Because I may have needed the fame from the result in that race to get me in the fame to get the Formula 1 contract on it, so that might have actually cost me. But I mean, I still got $1,500 in sponsor money from literally turning up and driving. So that is that. Well, that is massively anticlimactic. So, it's not often you get a book broken DNF, but that, that that's that. So let's advance. We've got no more races in August 2024. And, uh, let's go to the competition page. We're now in September. So now, we get to go back to Virginia and do it all over again at, well, in the IMSA Daytona Prototype Cup. So let us go continue in back in Automobilist 2. And let's get confirmation of those points, shall we, for the championship. Um, so it doesn't matter what happens at Monaco in the GTE race next time out. I'm the champion. I could probably DNF that and... Um, and just, just, I could basically just not even turn up to that race and still win. But you guys want to watch a GT race at Monaco. Let's, let's be real. Yeah, you're a little bit sadistic like that. <laughs> well, actually, do you know what? I'm going to put this over to a vote in chat for you right now. <coughs> because we've got two ways of doing this. Because I've already won the championship, right? I've already won the championship. So, it, this, this is academic, this Monaco race. So it doesn't matter if we do it now or after the DPIs. So I'm going to start a new poll. So, uh, which race next? So should we do GTE at Monaco or DPI at Virginia? I am going to need the fame, Trilbo. I am going to need to turn up and get the fame for this, yes. So I am going to kind of... I'm going to need a good result for this. So, your choice. So basically, I can either finish the GTE season now, and just wrap it off, and then do the two DPI races in a row. <laughs> or, I can go to back to Virginia in the DPI, now that I'm familiar with the weather conditions, get the DPI race done, and then come back to Monaco and, you know, it's like sort of snip, snap, snip, snap. It, I don't know. That's why I'm leaving it up to you. You can decide. So I've had seven votes in and, what? Well, 71% of those votes are currently saying go to Monaco. Which would make sense because it is right here. And it's going to be an evening race at Monaco as well. So it's going to be under the lights-ish, kind of. Which is going to be insane. Just, I mean, Monaco is crazy enough to begin with anyway. So you throw some nighttime in there as well. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be one hell of a spectacle. I can't wait. I really can't. So we've got eight votes in, 75% in favor of Monaco. Okay, I'm gonna wait until it gets to ten votes, and when we get to ten votes, we'll see how it goes. I mean it's still it's gonna be even if we get the next two votes for DPI at Virginia, which we're not because someone's now voted for GT, that's nine votes now. It's, it's, it's going to be that. It's going to be that. Okay, well, we're doing GTEs at Monaco next. You've made it pretty clear in the chat. Thank you for voting. Let's end the poll. And, yeah. 
there we go. We're going to Monaco. We're going to get back in the GTE car as a champion with one round to go. And we're going to see out the season, claim our trophy, officially. And then we're going to get onto the exciting DPI at Virginia and Long Beach. So no time like the present. Let's just get stuck straight in. Um, I feel like the AI difficulty was really good then. It was very close in the fixed wet weather conditions in the qualifying session. I mean, two tenths between the top eight. It's pretty good. So, uh, yeah. No time like the present. Let's get stuck straight into it. So qualifying is eight in the morning and then the race, I think, starts at six in the evening and goes into the night. Uh, Aldering, now the pressure's off, you're probably going to leave him for dead. Um, I mean, it's Monaco. It, it's going to be a crazy race. Qualifying is going to be so important here. It's raining! You're kidding me! Damp conditions rain. It's not light rain, it's rain rain. Okay, I, I've, got, I've got to go out on wet tyres. I have to. And then I'll see what the qualifying times are like. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll see what the qualifying times are like, and if, if I'm getting absolutely slaughtered, I'll try some dry tyres. Alright, well, let's go. Just got to get straight on with this. Yeah, 100% Trilbo. Some kind of weather forecast would be superb, you know? It takes it is clear. Push now. We've got 19 minutes to get a decent lap in. Let's get some heat to these brakes. I think I made the right choice here. This is... Car right. Hold your line. Right. This is right. proper rain. This is like 40% coming down. Clear to the right. Right side. Hold your line. Clear right. Car left. Clear left. This is going to be a pretty quiet race, I think. So much concentration required. Wet tyres were definitely the right choice. What a awesome circuit, though. Just the the work that has been done. Like, it's such a great version of this circuit. The detail around the track is superb. I'm gonna let that guy go. Right side, clear right. Try and get a clear track up ahead of me. I know I've got someone coming in hot behind, but that's fine, they'll just have to suffer. Make a gap. All right, here we go. to the unknown! Don't even think about it. No, no, no. Don't, don't do that. AI. Leader has just done a 
so easy to clip the wall on the right there. I know that from BMW M1 Pro Car time. Just done a 144.68. Bit of a drying line forming here. That's not good for wet tyres. Just done a 143.94. Oh, way too hot. That's sixth position. Break too late there. I'm reversing. You're locking your fronts into Sandivot. And that's why you don't have heroics into Sandivot. There we go. 15 minutes left. The track were good. It was only a minor bonk on the front right. Should be okay. Got enough fuel. Got enough tyres to keep going. But the rears are going to be nice and toasty now. So just got to keep that in mind. the steer there. Big on the steer everywhere actually to be honest. I mean there is a little bit of a drying line forming but it's definitely not dry weather tyres. Crunch. That front right's getting a hammering. Six to two is four point one seconds off the pace. Yeah. Watch the track limits, please, Dan. Thirteen minutes left in the session. P six. Rain simulator too, that's right Mr. Bishy. I'm amazed at how well that kickstart is going. It's insane. The response has just been off the charts. We are almost there. Oh. Ah, bugger. A lot closer than the apex of that chicane. Okay, just did not want to slow down at all then. I feel like the track conditions are definitely getting worse, even though it looks like there's more of a drying line. I don't think anybody's improving their times. That's half fuel. You've used half your fuel. Still got 11 minutes to go in the session. Just got to keep running till the end. Now it's better that time. Good run up the hill here. Oh, little lock up on the way in. I think I got away with it. Locking your left front going into Massanet. You're two tenths off the pace in sector one. Right front locking 
into Urubo. Car just does not turn. I suppose it's Monaco in the rain. In a GT. Very close to my current time. With a matter of tenths here. Get better through the tunnel there. Of Oppo on the way out. Sector 2 is not protect off the pace. Still 10 minutes left, 10 minutes to go. Oh, clunk on the right. So I'm gaining tents here and there. But I'm also losing tents here and there. Oh, that's straight into the wall. Classic mistake. Okay, return to pit box. Let's see if I can give it another crack. I mean, I'm one position behind Mark Bell. Eight tents off pole. It's not the end of the world, but <clears throat> qualifying is so important here. Maybe the tyre's just overheated. Do we have a clear track on exit? There's traffic behind. Nope. And I bashed the wall on the way out as well. Trying to keep it to the right-hand side. Didn't want to go over the yellow line. <coughs> Shouldn't affect the car too much. Death around the outside there. Oh wow! There's another trash car. Return to pit box and drive again. Uh, I definitely feel like the grip is getting worse out here. Nobody's improving their times, which is very. Very telling. Exit's clear. Push. Hopefully the rain goes away for the race. <laughs> I can't imagine a wet race at Monaco. That would be... Oh, wow! Absolutely. Am I on wet tyres here? Am I on dries? What's going on? It's just very, very not nice to drive. Am I missing something here? It's three outlaps and three bins. <coughs> well, I know AMS 2 version 1.5 has increased, well, improved the physics, but, uh... Have they changed something fundamental that I'm just not taking into account here? I know it's cold tyres, cold brakes, but it's always been that way. Have they maybe changed the way that warm-up happens? Just super cautious here. Super cautious. Maybe because there's not that many people running out on track, it's not... The water's not getting cleared the same. Oh wow, yeah. It just didn't want to... It's just locking up so easily. We're seeing lots of front locking. <coughs> We're seeing front locking going into Mirabeau. It does look like there's more water on the track now. Six minutes left in the session here. Yeah, I think you're right, Trilbo. I think the dry line is gone. 
That was definitely helping before. You're locking your right front into the chicane. Yep, the dry line has disappeared because that rain just keeps on coming down. <coughs> Excuse me. And there just aren't the cars on track to clear it away. So I think I think this is it. I think we're locked into six on the grid here. Unless the rain just magically stops at the end of the session. Let's put that bias way back. Let's see if that helps with the front lock in here. That brake bias has helped so much! I just think the, the bias was too far forwards. The fronts were snatching way too easily before. Try and stay off that sausage next time round. So I'm going to put the bias even further back. I feel like it's still too forward. You're looking at your left front, breaking for Laris Gas. 50-50 it is, in a Porsche, that's crazy talk, but if it works... That was a 145.54. If it works, it's not so crazy, right? if I get like a tenth it might get me a spot on the grid which could make a huge difference in the race there's plenty to fight for still stay off the sausage get the drive out much better sector 2 is 0.7 off the pace had it up until the final corner yeah that was only two tenths off there might be an improvement on this lap your quickest lap in this session sector one is 0.42 off the pace sector two is 0.7 off the pace sector three times okay that last lap was at 145.00 quiet time
sector two is zero and three five off the base. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh. I don't need to watch these track limits. Oh wait, no, there's still time for another lap after this. There's still time for another lap after this. I've still got 20 seconds on. Is there? Can I cross the line in time? Come on! Yes! Just! Just! That would have been two or three tenths up as well. throw this away. Traffic, get out of the way, do not hold me up. I lost so much time in that final sector, but it's still going to bump me up a few spots. Is it? Third. Oh, I managed to go from six to third on the grid on the last lap of qualifying, and I definitely had enough for a pole position on that lap. I definitely lost way more than three and a half tenths on that final lap there. <laughs> oh, I scraped it in, in the exit of the swimming pool chicane. I took way too much curb on the exit there. Oh, that was everything. That was absolutely everything I had on that lap. Oh, it's okay. Well, third is a lot better than sixth, especially at Monaco. But I, I it could have been first. It could have been pole. Oh well, where's Mark? Mark's in six, but that doesn't matter because it's academic. I've already won the champ. <coughs> already won the championship. Right. Can I get some fingers crossed in chat, please? It either needs to be fully raining or fully dry. If it's like light rain, damp track, that's the worst possible combo. Come on, come on, what's it going to be? The track temp is 30, the air temp is... Moist. Celsius, P3, It's moist. Minutes. It's moist. Okay. Right. Starting in third. This is definitely dry tyres. And it's definitely soft tyres. So again, a voyage into the unknown. I've got no idea how much fuel to take, so I'm just going to tank it. And hope for the best. Definitely dry, Trilbo. Definitely dry. If dry tyres were good enough for a, a damp, light raining situation at Virginia, dry tyres are definitely going to be enough for a moist track with no rain whatsoever. <laughs> Mr. Bishy. <coughs> Where's Stephen Cole when you need him? So, tank it. And then go to the pit strategy. So, we're going to put fuel in. Um, I reckon we're not going to use that much fuel at Monaco. I, I don't know how much fuel I'm going to use in the dry. So, 40 litres. And then, if I need to do more, I'll add more in on a straight somewhere. And try and use the pit menu. So let's just do that. And if we go to dries, it's going to change this 
to wet. So, let's turn damage off. And let's do fuel and tyres. We're going to put 40 litres in. And we're going to go wet. To wet tyres. So now, we have a default strategy of just putting fuel in and getting to the end. That's a great idea, by the way, Ricardo. Let's put some downforce on. Didn't think of that. Goes all the way up to 10. That's going to make it quite understeery. And uh, Trilbo said soften the front anti-roll bar. I'm going to do that as well. Uh, brake bias is going to go backwards. And steering lock goes all the way up to 28. I mean, it's Monaco. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to hedge my bets. I'm going to go 25. That's like a that's a quarter increase on the steering lock. That should definitely help at the, at the herpin, getting around the slower stuff. Although it will make the car a little bit twitchier. So, a lot of unknowns going into this race. So, <laughs> 45 minutes at Monaco. It's going to get dark. It's a late start. It's, well, it's 2 o'clock, but I've got time acceleration on. <laughs> Krabby, have I tried a faster car as well? I mean, if, if I could just magic a faster car up, I would love to. Uh, that would be that would be very nice, but I'm going to be doing some DPI races after this, so that's a little bit faster. And hopefully, if we uh, do well in those DPI races, we're going to land the Formula One contract, so we'll see. Hey, John Miller, good to see you. Join me just in time for the start of this Monaco race. 45 minutes, starting in third, rolling start, moist track, dry tyres. Wish me luck, fingers crossed. Here we go. Not nervous. Final race of the GTE season. I've already won the championship. So this is purely academic, but we need as good a result as possible to get as much fame as possible. Here we go. P3, here we go. Be ready. Jumped off the line, we're down to fourth. Gibson is leading the race. Okay, down, decent start. I think we can build something from here. On your left. There, another left. Right side. Clear right. Bit of a traffic jam there. Made it through in one piece, so that's good. That steering lock helps so much. It's Captain Obvious thing to say, I know. I should have done that a lot sooner. Skip and a jump there. So we survived the first lap. Looks like any sign of moisture on the track has now disappeared completely. Just got to survive the next 43 minutes worth. We are losing touch with the guys up at the front though. And again, this is my first dry laps on this track, so I'm still learning where the limits are, playing it on the safe side. Because you can't really push too hard at Monaco because there's no room for error. You can always build up. You can't build down if you scraped halfway across a fence. See right front locking into Mirabeau. Up 
got my lights on in preparation for the sun going down later. That way I don't have to worry about it when it does get dark. Oh, a bit late through to back there. So this Porsche seems to be quite good on the brakes compared to the other cars ahead of me. Seems to be catching a lot in the slow speed stuff or on entry to the slow speed stuff anyway. Time was 133.90. Sector two's two tenths off the pace. Four and a half seconds off the lead. Stuck behind this guy for third. To avoid locking those tyres as well. Try and make these last the distance. Because these are the softs, I'm going to try and make them go the whole way. No ABS in these cars. That's why I cut the chicane, because that would have been a big lockup otherwise, and that would have been about 10% off my tyres. Not worth it. Rather bail out and live to fight another day. The actor Marcos ahead is now 0.6. Very impressed with the AI so far as well. No pileups, no stacks. I would have expected a bit more carnage by now, especially with a bit of side by side in the first few laps. Oh, there's a bonk. ALF. Very minor damage, no suspension, just a bit of bodywork by the feels of it. Car still goes in a relatively straight line. This is all I really ask for in a race car. Oh, Macau is a fantastic circuit sticky, but fortunately, it's not available in AMS2. Not yet, anyway. I think I've definitely got the pace to pull away from this guy, if I can find a way through, <laughs> he says at Monaco, I think I'll be able to make a gap. Welcome back from vacation, Olaf. Good to see you. Hope you had a nice time, mate. Okay, now we're matching race pace. You've just done a 133.76. The guy behind has just done a 134.04. You're pulling away from the guys behind as well. have calmed down a bit now as well. They did wear out a bit at the start of the stint, but they seem to have plateaued a bit now in terms of how much life I'm taking out of them. That initial bite when they were fresh. Oh, big check up through the middle of that chicane there. Oh. 
definitely getting held up here. Last lap time was at 133.88. I feel like the pace is coming towards me. <laughs> oh, I love it. to seize my opportunity when it comes along. Three tenths up on this lap. Very slow. Through chicane. It's in the slow speed stuff. That Corvette is not good at getting the power down. I just can't get enough of a run to make a definitive move here. It needs to be definitive. I can't go half-hearted into one of these things. You've just done a 133.92. The truck temperature is increasing. It's now 33 Celsius. Very liberal with the curves at seven to vote there. So I think I should need to take about 20 or 30 litres of fuel, but maybe when I get clearer, if I get clearer, I'm going to start using more fuel if I run faster times, because I'm lifting off a lot in the braking zones here, just to avoid slamming on and locking the tyres and running into the back of this guy up ahead of me, Marcuson. so close but I just can't do anything with it that's good consistency keep it up that lap was at 133.94 you're two tenths off the pace in sector three got a good run here got a great run here on the 93 Let's see if we can get him coming out of this right hander down the hill No, couldn't quite get the overlap. That's as late as I dare break without risking a massive flat spot. But he knows I'm there now. Pressure is on and we are closing up on second place ever so slowly. It's turned into a very tense race this. We dropped the guy behind by about five seconds. I'm half a second down on my best. Well, the guys ahead are closer than ever. It's very wide to pass indeed, Sean. I 
Oh, it's an even better run. On your one. Still there. Just turned in on me. Still there. Clear left, left side. Clear to the left. I mean, I, was, I couldn't get any tighter to the barrier than that. That was cheeky. At least I know where I stand now with Marcuson. He's not going to give me an inch. I saw that gap, went for it, what a send! Had to try something. Right, quiet lap time. Let's catch seconds. Brilliant, keep it up. P3, that was a 134.36. Let's go and catch the second. Hey, Bose! Clip the wall on the exit at the back there. Kind of put the car flying a bit. No damage. Mirror's still there, so that's good. Still my best lap of the race, even with that wall. Thanks for the subscribe. Nuke drop. Good to see you, Nuke Drop. Everybody, big shout out and shout for Mr. Nuke Drop. It's the guy who's going to be building Thermal Eats over version 2.0 for us in a few months. Actually, give him the biggest shout out you can. The guy's a bona fide legend. He's just a nice guy as well. He's a great guy. We've got a race on our hands here though. Started third, dropped to fourth at the start because I got jumped on the on the run to the first corner. Now back up to third. On the streets of Monaco with 28 minutes to go in the race. Let's see what we can do here. Almost half distance. Fuel and tires are looking good. Actually, tyres are looking kind of so-so. That rears are down at 60%. Are they going to make it to the end, these softs? It's going to be it's going to be close. I mean, I'm going to save a lot of time in the pit stop by not changing them, but w will they be drivable at the end of 45 minutes? Andre's on it. Andre's doing the maths. Andre thinks I'm going to be 100% dead on the right rear at the end. Unless I start saving tyres, I guess. And driving conservatively. I'm not going to make it on... Not going to make it on tyres, so maybe I'll have to take some softs at the stop. And maybe that's the best thing to do, because... <coughs> you know, you want grip at Monaco, but... And then again, you also want track position. If I don't change tyres, the AI probably will change tyres. And then I'll have a nice big advantage to cruise at home towards the end, but they will be catching me at a vast rate of knots. And I mean, I could get a puncture. It's risk. It's risky. What do you think? Should I change tyres at the stop?
Pit stop for a shoey. We have to Thompson ahead is now 0.6. We're not really making as much of an impact in second position as I was before, but then again, I'm, maybe it's the tyres that are going. I'm reducing my grip here. Oh, thank you, Sticky. Thanks for posting that link in chat, mate. I'm going to have to set up an exclamation mark nuke drop command for the chat. Put that on my to-do list. <laughs> Right, let's, let's try and get this guy. Okay, down, we're matching race pace. That lap time was 134.24. Very sweaty race so far. I made it further than I did at Virginia, so that's a plus. I haven't DNF'd it yet. <laughs> what, a, what a shocker that race was. What a write-off that was those who've been watching from the start. On your way. Oh. On your way. Big check up there. It's way off the throttle. Right rear is now at 57%. Six percent. P It might be at 50% at half distance, the tyre, but as the tyre wears down, it's going to be harder to drive on. I'm going to slide it more, and that's going to increase the wear, so it's not going to be like a linear percentage drop throughout the race. That's the tricky thing. Check up there. Very slow at the apex. They must be really struggling for grip. Marcos is getting closer. The gap's now zero by three six. It's a bit of a lock up on the front there as well. Putting wide for the chicane. Oh, 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 okay. Okay, yep, no, I think I'm going to change tyres because that grip is definitely getting less. Definitely getting slider, yeah. Definitely starting to struggle now. Maybe I pushed the tyres too much earlier in the race and the AI have been preserving, which is why they were slow and then. That's why I'm struggling to kind of match them again now. All right, Dan, don't let this guy distract you. Lost two seconds on that lap. Your last lap time was at 135.18. the wrong button. Right side, clear right. Car right, clear 
Mike, you're clear. Tried to press the pit menu, actually pressed the pit limiter instead. That's a rookie mistake. Okay, I've got soft slick selected at the pit stop now. I'm changing tires at the pit stop. It's it's too risky. I mean, I might get a puncture before they actually get to zero, and it's it's becoming incredibly more difficult to drive now. Hey, Chiba, good to see you. Yeah, I'm struggling to keep up now. You're matching race pace, this is good. That lap was at 134.36. Sean, enjoy the rest of your day. Good to see you. I'll get back to you regarding the Skype as well. I'll work out a day and we'll let you know. We'll organize something. <coughs> Excuse me. Defend your position. Don't let him through. He's faster than you. Throw it lows. So the sun is starting to get a bit lower in the sky here now. Just reminded, we do have time acceleration on, so the race is going to finish at night. Now, I'd be lying if I told you, Mr. Bishy, I haven't thought that far ahead. <laughs> I haven't done any practice. The only practice I've done is what you've seen on stream so far. No idea what the transit time well is done. in pits. You're looking really good. Come on, keep your focus. That's 20 minutes to go. You're reeling. Tops. The gap's now 0.6. Keep him in your sights. Force the mistake. You've just done a 134.45. I forgot to increase the brake ducts. That's default setup after the update. It's gone back to default, so I forgot to increase the brake duct size. Have to be easy on the brakes here. The last thing I want to do is come into the pits and get stuck in traffic. But maybe an undercut would be the good way to do this right now. Ooh, a bit of rear lock in there. You can hear the revs chattering on the way down. Still within two seconds of the leader, so it's still pretty close. Ooh, that, that sun's getting nice now. those of you who've wanted to know what a night race at Monaco looks like, well, you're about to find out. Cap to Marcos, behind is now not rotate. I think I might go for a few more laps. That lap was at 134.89. Let's see if everyone else comes into the pits. Sorry for the lack of commentary, by the way. As I'm sure you can appreciate, this takes a lot of concentration. A lot of concentration.
Maybe second is better through on Steen Oaks. Martin Vindus, welcome. Hope you're awesome as well, mate. I'm doing grand. Final race of the GTE season here in Automobilist 2 Racing Life Career Mode. Lord Brogan has already mathematically sealed the championship. 27 points ahead and only 25 up for grabs. So this is all academic, this race, but I'm doing this to try and get as much fame as much fame as possible because that is what I need to potentially secure an F1 contract for next season. Okay, down, hold your nerve, just keep it smooth, no mistakes. You're quicker than us through, loads. Sun is almost down. Lights are going to start coming on soon. Flames from that Corvette up ahead. Lighting up the road surface. Superb detail. Come on, just send it. You slow into Marascas. Oh, I'm trying. I'm trying. The lap time was 135.00. 15 minutes left. That's 15 minutes. Good consistency. Keep them coming. Right. I think now's the time. I think now's the time. I'm going to call it. I hope for a gap in the traffic behind. I'll box box this lap to undercut. Is either go really well or horribly wrong and we'll find out in about 14 minutes time probably less than that once people cycle out brakes okay well that cost me about two seconds to the leader there lock my brakes took to the escape roads because I was just gonna go into the back of him otherwise that was dumb but definitely confirms that it's time to get some new tires and some fuel in all right keep it nice and tight to the inside here watch your speed oh that was a tight entry there oh Okay. Right. That was very close to throwing it all away on the inlap there. Fuel and tyres are on. Yep, we're good. Hold on, go. And now we pray for a gap in the traffic. We might have one. We've got six seconds to the car behind. I think we've done it. I think we're very lucky here. There's a car approaching. Don't cross the white line. I think we're extremely lucky here. Need to get some heat into these brakes. So as the sun sets here at Monaco, it is absolutely hammer time. So I'm going quiet for a few laps now. Headphones on, volume up, enjoy the sound of the Porsche. The ridiculously good sounding Porsche at Monaco. On fresh tyres and a low tank of fuel. Here we are. Let's undercut them.
fine. Coming into the pits, the guys at the front, it's on, it's on. Keep an eye on those gaps, do they take tyres? Where are they going to come out? Thompson is now in the lead. The car in front is pitting. Definitely up on the delta on this lap by like a second and a half nearly. Right down. Ten minutes to go, that's ten minutes left. Alright, yep, we've jumped Gibson. That's the fastest lap of the race. That lap was at 31.76. The track temperature is decreasing. It's now 35 Celsius. I think, we, I think we might be doing it. When when are the others going to come into pit? Is this enough? Is this enough to do it? So how good does that Porsche sound? And how good does Monaco at night look? It's in VR, just Automobilista 2 is just such a fantastic experience. done it. Yep, we're in the lead. We've done it. Wow, we've jumped them hugely. Goodness, mate, this is perfect. You're in the lead. Fastest lap. That lap time was 131.26. Down into the 131s as well. Wow. We've, I think we've done it. I think the undercut was massive. It wouldn't have worked if we come out in traffic though. So that was definitely a, that was a risk, but it's a risk that paid off by the looks of it. It's raining. It's raining. It's just started raining. Rain's gone up to 1%. Okay, now it's starting to drizzle. Oh no. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. This is not what. Oh no. This is not good. I hope the rain doesn't get too hard. It's only at four percent. Oh, it's definitely slippy though. As long as it doesn't get above twenty percent and the track doesn't start to get like wet, wet, it should be fine. Ah. Oh. Gap to Gibson behind is now fourteen seconds. The quickest at the moment. That was at one thirty-three point six nine. The track temperature is falling. It's now so stressful. Just when I thought I had it all in hand, a little bit of moisture comes out of the out of the sky. Monaco at night in the rain. Everything is getting thrown at me today. 
7%, rain's up to 7. Oh yeah, definitely a bit of moisture on the track there. You can actually see the raindrops coming in. It must be coming in from over the water. is up at 10%. Oh wow, yeah, visible on, on the windscreen there. This is where the AI really excel. In these mixed conditions. my pit strategy on the fly just in case I have to come in for wets at the end come on Dan just five minutes left hold your nerve we can win this although saying that it's probably only like three laps left in the race with the advantage that I've got unless it absolutely pours down in the next few minutes and it's undrivable I've got light rain here getting harder if it's undrivable you got to come in for wets but it's not it's not wets at the moment Track is still looking pretty dry out there. It's not. It's not collecting on the on the track surface. Ah, oh, this is stressful. My pit strategy is ready to go though, just in case. up at 20% now this is this is kind of the crossover territory once it gets above 20% the rain does start to accumulate on the surface of the road because it's a little bit more than light rain don't need wipers just yet though the gap to Gibson behind is now 16 seconds we're currently setting the pace you've just done a 135.32 the track temperature is decreasing it's now 28 Celsius Nice and easy, nice and easy. That's definitely, definitely the wettest part of the track there. Oh no, no, this is definitely the wettest part of the track now. Wow, coming out of the tunnel, you can really see the moisture. Rains at 25%. Gap behind is 20 seconds. Still on slicks. So the back markers up ahead, they're not coming in for wets yet, so the AI doesn't think it's <coughs> really gonna for wets. Okay, it's now at 28%. I reckon there's two laps to go in this race. 138.10. The track temperature is decreasing. It's now 26 Celsius. Two minutes to go, two minutes. is at 30%. Left side. Okay, Dan, we're getting proper right now. Looks like it's getting harder. On your left. Hold your line. Clear left. 
heading through the traffic here. Far left, clear to the left. Wow, proper, proper rain. Far right. Still there. What are you doing? Get out of the way. to be de decisive with those back markers then. Oh, this is terrifying, Kev. Can I do another lap on dries? Oh, do I come in for... Do I come in for wets? It's pretty horrible to drive. Got one lap to go on dries. If the AI come in... I I'm, I've got to do it, because if the AI come in for wets... They're going to be so far behind, they're not going to make it up in time. All I have to do is just not put it in the fence, because they can't catch me. They can't catch me on dries, and they won't catch me on wets if they pit. So I just need to keep it keep it facing the right way. What, what a stressful end to this race. One lap less would have been perfect. Come on, keep it out the fence. You're looking at your left front, breaking for Massinet. This is Lando Norris Simulator 2023 right now. Got a spin turn it to get round. Car one. Because the AI is trying to unlap themselves here. Wow. This is terrifying. Look at them. Look at, look at us all crawling around. Nobody wants to piss for wet. If anybody has, they're going to have a massive advantage right now. This lap alone is 22 seconds off the pace so far. What are you doing? Far right. Clear right. You're locking your front to go in into to back. Unlapping themselves and immediately going straight into the barrier afterwards. This is proper rain. This is full on rain, this. On your left. Clear left. Okay, Dan. We've seen lots of front locking. Just wouldn't turn. Got some suspension down. I think I've got away with it out. though. I think I've got away with it. Looking your front into Larascas. Five seconds to the second place behind. I think I've got away with it, even with the engine poking out the bonnet underneath. Hey Mets! You won. Fantastic. Oh. oh that Yes! Oh wow, what a finish to the race that was. Two laps of torture at the end. My god. <laughs> Stuck behind third and fourth for like 80% of the race. Came in for the undercut, got a 10 second advantage. And then it just poured down with two laps to go. Wow. What a stressful end to the race. <laughs> Sorry for the distraction, nuke drop. <laughs> You can add it to my bill. You can't charge your client for that, mate. <laughs> wow. Wow, that was stressful. Very scruffy at the end, and yeah, I've got damage on the bonnet there, so um At least at least the winnings of the race are gonna pay for the repair bill, right? <laughs> True Andre. That, that is the good thing about AMS 2. 
I mean, I'm so, I'm so curious as to whether I should have taken the wet tyres. Because, yeah, that lap was, well, that was, uh, it was a 154. It was like 23 seconds off the pace. <coughs> yeah, it wouldn't have been worth coming in for wets. On your way. Definitely wouldn't have been worth coming in for wets because by the time you pit, you wouldn't have made up those 23 seconds again on that one lap. If you were going to do it, you should have done it with like three laps to go. But that is the end of the season for the GTEs. And we rounded it out with a win. Oh no, that's not a safe place to do donuts. Feeling like Sergio Perez right here. So let's just uh, uh let's just escape it back to the pit. Oh yeah. And let's swallow half of our mustache in the process as well. So uh skip the cooldown lap. Qualified third. <coughs> I ended the season with a win. So if my calculations are correct, I mean Mark Bell finished in 5th, so we extended our points advantage even more. The 25 points for Bulk, five, uh, 10 points for Mark. Which means... Well, there we have it! Official confirmation! Bulk Brogan wins the GTE Championship in Automobilist 2 Racing Life. So, let's switch over to Racing Life. And let's put the results in, shall we? Wow, what a season. What a season. So qualified in third. Finished in first with a win. Championship result first as well. So now, let's generate this and let's see where we stand. Ah, there we go. The, wow, look at that. I don't know if you can see that here. 0.74 fame earned in the race. 7.43 fame earned in the championship. $13,500 in sponsor because we got our bonus for finishing on the podium. 1.25 million championship reward prize money. <laughs> we we just got enough to buy a Formula One car. Pretty, I think. Oh, maybe we can lease a Formula One car. We're rich, Martin. Okay. <coughs> Money bags, look at that. Two million in the bank. 68 races, 20 poles, 35 podiums, 24 wins. Now, to get into the Formula One season, you need 70 fame. 70. So we're on 64 at the moment. Now, for winning the GTE Championship, we got seven fame. I am not in a position to win my second championship. Because if we go to the competition page, we can see that we have an IMSA Daytona Prototype Cup race at Virginia. And then if we skip along to next month, we have an IMSA Daytona Prototype race at Long Beach. So, two races to go. Now, the maximum fame that you can get. You can get up to 70 fame for winning this. We're gonna need 70 to, to, to get into Formula I don't know. I don't know if this is gonna be enough. Unless we max out. Oh, I don't know. This is gonna be so close. This is genuinely going to be so close. Okay, so just to explain for those of you, for example, Nuke Drop, who might not be familiar with what this is, uh, Racing Life is an, a third-party app for Automobilist 2 where you can plug in your results from the game and it generates a career. So there's all of these different uh, championships that you can sign up to race throughout the year. To race in these championships, say, for example, Formula 1, right? So let's have a look. For, um, Formula 1. You need a minimum driver fame of 65. Well, next season that's going to go up to 70. Because of the update. Um, so that's why the driver fame is, is important. You gain fame, you gain money for uh, for doing races. And you've got to work your way up from you know Copa FL Classics to Hot Cars 
you know, Formula V, all that kind of stuff. And we've done all that. This is obviously part 16 of the our Automobilista 2 Racing Life career mode that we're doing. So we've been working our way up and yeah, we're going to need 70. Ignore when it says 65. We're going to need 70 because that's going to update next season because the last time I started a season in, in Racing Life was like version 1.4. We're now on version 1.7 of this app. So that's been <coughs> that's been updated since then. It's going to be so close. Okay. Now let's just check car dealers. Let's check the Formula Ultimate. Formula 1. So, okay. To buy a Formula 1 car is $2 million. To take part in Formula 1. It's a... 400,000 registration fee and a $2 million car to buy outright. So if we do all right in the DPI championship, so let's go back to DPI. You know, prize money for DPI is a million, but if we finish, say, fourth, which is realistic where we're going to finish, 729,000. We could... We're probably going to be able to afford it, but I don't know if we're going to have the fame. So there's only there's only one way to find out, and that is just to do these races and get stuck in. So, yeah. 45 minute mandatory pit stop race coming up at IMSA, uh, at Virginia International Raceway, and then Long Beach to finish the season. Two races to go. We're going to do them both today. We don't need to worry about our sponsor, because if we look at our sponsors, we've still got eight races left on the contract here. And that's so we're going to be good. But are we likely? Are we likely to go back into GTE racing again? Not really. So I should probably stop leasing this car. You know, I mean, I've won the GTE championship now. I don't need to keep it. I'm not going to use it. And it's just going to cost me. <laughs> Uke drop. If I fall slightly short, does Racing Life have a Kickstarter simulator to make up the difference? <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, actually, that's a good point. That is a good point. I think there is an option. So, yeah, yes, you can buy an entry. It's greyed out there. Let me let me do it for one. This. Mitsubishi Lance, it won't let me do that. I don't know if you can see it here. It's it's greyed out. It's greyed out, but it says buy entry. So, I mean, if we get some more money... Right. It, it might be possible. What we might have to do is we might have to get a loan from the bank to pay our way in as a, like a, a Lance Stroll... Uh... Uh, Nicholas Latifi kind of style pay driver. Okay. Okay, it's it's gonna be. It's gonna be it's gonna be tight. Oh, it's, these these two races are gonna be absolutely critical. So I reckon we just get back into AMS two racing light. Uh, AMS two. Let's continue. Lone Shark Simulator. Hmm. I might not have the fame. I mean, it could be the case that I max out the fame. I get up to 70 by the end of this championship. So, okay, there we are. We're done. WEC is done. So if we go back to championship. And now here's our DPI. Right, so this is the other championship. Oh, no, it's 30-minute race, not 45-minute race. We're in fifth in the championship. That's not going to be good enough to get enough fame. Like, ideally, we need to be winning the championship, but Lee Shirley has got a massive advantage here. Like... This is going to be tough. This is, this is going to be tough. But, let's get stuck straight into it. DPI at Virginia. Now, if I remember correctly, this is set to be the same game in day as the GTE race at Virginia we just did. Which is absolutely pouring down. So let's have a look. Is it raining? Because we're only going to get, well, I think 15 minutes to set a lap. No, heavy cloud, but dry. So that means to me, <coughs> that means to me, get out on track ASAP before it does rain. Oh, listen to those meaty Cadillacs. 
Let's pause that music. Let's get going, shall we? Let's get straight out on track. I think... I think it's going to rain here. So, let's reset the view. Let's put the pit limiter on. Engine ignition first. And lights. Oh, I'll, I'll have a look at that after quali. All clear on pit exit. Okay, Mr. Bishy. We've got 14 minutes to set a lap. Your brakes are cold, be careful. Your tyres are cold, watch out. So this is a car that doesn't have ABS as well, but it does also have traction control. Lots of downforce compared to the GTE. Wow, this thing feels like a rocket ship after driving that Porsche for two hours. So difficulty of the AI is at 107. So let's see where this falls. Oh wow. Oh, a bit of errand on the nose over the over the crest there. Really got to smash this out of the park now. Uh, oh, I got distracted by potato there. No, you what? <laughs> yep, you are right. Oh, okay. Let's just go back to the pits again, actually. Uh, that was a waste of a lap. I got distracted by Potato telling me that my seating position was wrong and by the time I look back up I'm on the grass. That's better. It takes it looks clear. Tire temperatures are fine. <laughs> Potato doing his job as usual. And yet I can only echo what Vushal and Potato said in chat form. Thank you, Nuke Drop, for taking on Thermalito, mate. We are so close to the Kickstarter goal. Only gonna be a matter of time, I get the feeling, before we close that one out. Not not that it wasn't ever gonna go ahead. You know? I mean, clearly you can see there's some incredibly passionate and incredibly supportive people in this community that just absolutely love the place and the event that we put on every year. So your work is greatly appreciated, mate. And who knows? I mean, if you get the time, it'd be awesome to have you in the race as well. An honorary spot on the grid for the event. Uh, Vushal. Uh, if you can't get it working through Kickstarter, then what you can do is maybe put something in through PayPal, and I'll I'll use my wife's account to make a donation on behalf of everyone who's submitted through PayPal, like your Olafs and your potatoes the guy and your bushels. Because I can't add funds on my own account. That's the only thing. I can't, can't, uh, I can't donate to my own campaign. Which kind of makes sense, you know, because you can't just say, Oh, I'm going to raise a thousand dollars and then just put a thousand dollars on and then you've got a completed campaign. But what I'll do, I'll keep a spot free for anyone who donates through PayPal. I'll make a group contribution on behalf of you all together. One big lump sum. And then, at least you get on the boards and I'll reserve a garage or a, off the pace in sector one. a leaderboard spot for you regardless anyway, you know? I'll make ten it work. That's ten minutes left. Because I know that... I know, yeah, it, um, Kickstarter doesn't accept PayPal. I know that not everybody has a proper full-on credit card. 
or a debit card, basically. <coughs> I'm so sorry, I'm swallowing my moustache here as I go. Oh, no worries, Fushul, no worries. Oh, a bit late on entry there. Such a difficult corner, blind up over the crest. Have to turn in as well. Okay, now that I've explained the whole PayPal Kickstarter, non-Kickstarter thing, I should probably <coughs> concentrate more on the driving. Focus time. Two tenths off the pace in sector one. Sector two is 0.8 off the pace. Sector three is 0.7 off the pace. You've just done a Sets up on this lap. Sector one time's okay. Okay, down. Ten minutes of fuel remaining. Almost went full potato. This lap for Rampanelli. On the outside there. Point eight eight. three seconds up. There's a lot of time to be gained in this corner here. Sector two time is good. I didn't gain anything. <laughs> I didn't turn in early enough there. 1.5 seconds up but there's still... Still time to be gained in the final sector, especially where does that put me on the grid? Eighth. Session. Sectors one and two are quick. Sector three is 0.7 off the pace. Your outside track limits there. Spotter says I have, but the lap still counts in AMS2. The time is still going. It's on. Tenth and a half down. Sector one time is good. Oh no, that's not good. That's not good. Oh, severe damage. Damn. Okay, return to pit box. Edit setup. I need to put some more front down. F I can't. That's as much front down force as you can put on. Right. Well, thanks for your advice, Potato, but unfortunately that's not going to work in this instance. That is maxed out on front down force. Fastest lap for Scott, 134.64. That's a new fastest lap for <coughs> 134.43. Right, I've got six tenths to find. There's traffic behind, watch your mirrors. Well, no. Four tenths, five tenths. Half a second to find. It's doable. Even two tenths will jump me up to third or fourth on the grid at the moment. Fighting for my Formula One career. And it's only in the qualifying session of the penultimate round. The car does feel great to drive though. 1.5 physics. Oh my god, so good. The car is planted. Just my driving. It's really not highlighting it that well. I think I'm still in the GTE mentality. Five minutes to go, five minutes left. I'm still driving it like a like a tin top, not a prototype. I need to 
Trust the damn force. Right, here we go. Here we go. P8. Could definitely break later into turn one. Tenth and a half down again, at least I'm consistent. We are catching a bit of traffic on this lap though. You're attacked off the pace in sector one. There we go, good exit. Tiny slipstream coming down this straight as well. Estimate you've got five minutes of fuel remaining. Sector two time is quick. kidding me. Oh, ghosted by a car coming into the pits really threw me off. That was <coughs> a couple of tenths up as well. 3.0 seconds off the pace. Right side. That was unfortunate. Clear right. And I'm getting harassed by the AI behind. Have enough fuel for one more lap after this. Add enough time as well. Tires look good as well, so it should be either this lap or the next. It's going to have to be. That's two minutes left. Two minutes. Well, it's not going to be this lap. <laughs> Right, once again, leaving it to a last lap shootout. Same as Monaco in the GTEs. See, look. Two tenths in the final sector there. If I can match my first sector, we could snatch pole. Quiet time, last chance. I'm not. Wow, half a second up. Do not throw this away. Two minutes of fuel remaining. Very little fuel left. I was too cautious there, gave the apex way too much space. Well, I did get a slow and fast out though, so I've got more speed to carry down this straight now. Oh, overcooked it, it was wide.
good final on this corner. Okay, I think it's only going to be two and a half tenths. Oh, it's it's not oh, it's not going to be enough. It's going to be a few more spots. Wait, no, it is what? It's pole. Oh, did I just get my maths completely wrong there? I think I did. <laughs> I think I just snuck pole on. I did. I did. I got it. Well, actually, oh, uh, um, Vushal, maybe you're onto something. Maybe the fibres of these bulk broken moustaches is what's been making me so sick this year. Maybe I've been inhaling all these fibres and... Hang on. Maybe it is. Maybe these moustaches are what's been giving me these chest infections because I've been breathing in all of this. Oh, well. It's all part of the course, isn't it? <laughs> I had my chest x-ray at the weekend. They'll tell me if I've got a collection of, of moustache in there, I'm, I'm sure. Anyway, pole position! Pole position! By 0 0.77. 0 0.077, Ethan. <laughs> it could be. It could be, I don't know. We'll see. What do you reckon? Vote moustache on or off? as we go into the race. Right side. Clear to the right. What's the weather going to be? You're in pole. It's Still dry. One minute, 30 minutes. It's dry. Yes. That is, that is a relief. That is a nice relief. Okay. I thought it was going to be raining. So... Hey LPF! I actually can't remember what my fuel number was. Can someone rewind the stream very quickly and tell me what my fuel number was? Hey the Hun! Uh, so we've got 30 minutes times 60 seconds. Is 1,800 seconds. Divide that by, say, 1 minute 35. So that is what, 95 gives us... 18, let's say 20 laps. 20 laps times how much fuel? Is it like 7.6 or something? So I think... I think we might have to tank this thing. I think we might have to tank it because... This is saying me... Uh, okay, so let's do 20 times 7.2 then. 144 litres. This is saying we're going to need 144 litres. This is a thirsty little DPI, this. Wow. Well, okay then. So, let's get rid of these, because these are our GTE strats, and we don't want them. Because they're going to have all the wrong tyre pressures on them. So, dry. Fuel on tyres, yes. Uh, softs and tank it. Damage. Let's get rid of all the damage because we don't want to be stuck in the pits repairing minor damage if it's minor. If it's major, it's probably going to see us out of the race, right? So 31 seconds stationary. Okay, so that's dries. Now, I'm going to set up a contingency strategy. If it does rain, then we're still going to want to tank it and we'll just deal with the strategy after that if we don't make it to the end. Uh, yep, want to change all tyres to wets. Um, <coughs> because in this series it is a mandatory pit stop. You have to stop. You can't not stop. You have to. There's a pit window, so that's that. So let me just check. Wets. Yep, wets are good. Cool. Dries are good. Yep, so I'm going to go in with the dries as default. <laughs> Vushal. I mean, I mean, the moustache could go on here. It could do. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Maybe for, maybe for the Formula 1 career, Bulk relocates the moustache. 
Right, so dry. We're going to go in with the dry strategy as default. We've got a full tank of fuel, we've got soft tyres. We've got half an hour race coming up. But fuel use is double. So you're probably thinking, why do you need to have a full tank and then some in a half hour race? Because just to introduce a bit of strategy, I've got fuel and tyres on double. <laughs> Alright Sticky, enjoy your sleep mate. Thanks for hanging out. Good to see you as always. Rest up bro, take it easy. And um, many castrols to you good sir. Many castrols indeed. Okay, this is the race. Wish me luck. <clears throat> Wish me luck. If you haven't already, <clears throat> don't forget to leave that stream a like. It's going to be a tough ask to hold on to this one. But I'm going to give it my best shot. Starting on pole. Okay, Dan, get ready. Pole position. Let's go. We're on the inside. Oh, big lock up into turn one. Front right is already down to 92%. And Lee Chorley, my championship rival, is up into second. That's the guy I need to try and outscore as much as possible. That lock up cost me 8%. Wow. That is how delicate the tyres are. Pulling away a bit of a gap here. Start, mate. Nice one. Right side. Still there. Clear right. Okay, down. Okay, Not today, down. Lee, you don't. <laughs> Very important potato. It didn't feel like that big of a locker, but I guess I was on the dirty line on the inside. Breaking up my usual point. Wow, the AI is so much better on the brakes. So much better on the brakes than me. Have I got the fuel turned up? Yep, I have. Yeah, definitely. Maybe that's why I'm so prone to locking up, because the AI are just able to send it into the braking zones, which is for which is forcing me to try and counter that by going beyond what the car is capable of. I just need to calm it down and do my own thing. I also need to maybe try and play this strategically, like a a Rosberg. Good shout potato, I'll put the bias back a few clicks. If I was smart, <coughs> it's a risky move, but I should be trying to push Lee back into the pack. So he drops positions. Because he is the leader of the championship by a long way. And then the question becomes, when do we pit? You know? The lap time was at 135.28. The guy behind has just done a 135.32. All right, clear to the right. Yeah, they're mega on the brakes, aren't they? I could also take the Schumacher approach, that is right. Potato, and just go full whack into the side pod. I 
Oh, well, that's the thing, Olaf. Strategic moves and DDF Racer never work. Strategic moves and Buck Brogan work slightly more of the time. I guess. I'm not pulling away, though. I am the cork in the bottle here. I'm going to have to hold on to this. Way too shallow. That forced me wide on the exit. I've lost my momentum here. I'm still up for a personal best, but yeah, not as good as it could have been. Terry Pratchett reference Mr. Bishy. I like that. That's the fastest lap of the race. That lap was at 134.66. Car right. Hold your line. Still there. Hold your line. Put her right. You're clear. Nice try, Lee. Not, to, not today, not that lap. Left side. Put her to the left. Try another click. Another click rearwards potato. Thank you, engineer. Oh no, that was that was loose as. I think 54 is one click too much. second back, it's not much. Okay, now, don't, don't let this guy distract you. Maybe with a bit more practice, Potato. <laughs> I mean, you justified in saying that. Maybe with a bit more practice, I could have a rear wood break by us. Zero. You've literally witnessed all of the practice I've had at this combo in this stream. Little strategic block there throughout the apex. Slow him down, and that's put him under pressure from Rampinelli. That's excellent. That was a bit of strategic play there. That's like a entry-level strategic move, trying out a little bit of block blocking there to spice up the racing. Now Lee's under pressure. Go on, Rampinelli, take him out. Take him out. Risky game, this. I dropped two seconds there, but I'm just trying to I'm trying to do anything I can to take points off Lee behind on, within within the rules. That time was 136.48. Oh no, way too deep. Right side, rewind. You're the left. Clear right. Way too deep on the brakes there. Come on, don't let him get away. Right side. Still there. Still there, clear to the right. Well, that wasn't intentional, but it worked. There's another decent chunk out of my front right gone as well, but Lee Chorley is now back in third place. You've used half your fuel. Right 
right side. Still there. We're right. Yeah, it's not worked again. I'm getting absolutely needled there. Um, traditionally, nuke drop. The AI have always been pretty good on the brakes compared to me. Compared to everyone, actually. Because they can find the limit of the brakes without fear of locking up. They brake as if they do have ABS, you know? They always get it right. So they can always brake at peak performance. Is that Lee in the pits? Lee Chorley's gone for an early pit stop on the mandatory window here. That was a 136.44. This could really backfire. This is probably going to get stuck in traffic. This is great. This is great, actually. If he, if he gets a gap in the traffic, he could get the undercut, though. I just got to keep an eye on that. So now... That's 20 minutes to go. 20 minutes. Now it's just hammer time. Now it's no more blocking. No more holding people up. Now it's just maximum attack now. With Lee in the pits. The gap to Rampanelli behind is increasing. It's now 0.9. Still in the pits. Did he come in for damage, maybe? What's going on there? He's he's in last. He's up ahead of me. Oh, big lockup. I'm going to be so glad to get these tyres off at the pit stop. Yeah, Lee's still in the pits. Has Lee retired? He's still in the pits. This is huge for the championship. No mistakes. That lap was a 135.50. Oh, rear tire's getting a bit hot now. Right side. Clear right. You're clear. Contact. Right. Contact from behind. My strat. <coughs> Excuse me. That moustache. My strategy is just to go as long into the race as possible. Because if I get undercut, well, I mean, if I, yeah, I just haven't got the pace to like beat them on track. I've got to hold them up. Got to be defensive here. I am, yeah, I'm prone to the undercut big time here. Okay, Rampinelli's coming into the pits. I can drive without having to look in my mirrors now. No pressure, let's just do this. Two laps of fuel left. 135.66, sector 2 is 0.7 off the pace. Might as well use those tyres. Not taking them home with me. The gap to Scott behind is increasing. It's now 3.6. So pit stop next lap. I 
actually don't need a full tank's worth either. I'm going to take a bit of fuel out. I only need about 60. Good lap. Box this lap, Den. Or should I say bulk? Not Den, bulk. <laughs> I always forget. I think you might have gone outside of track limits there. I think Spotter gets a bit confused because it still counts on the Automobilista 2 timer. My, my time is still going in game, but Spotter thinks I've cut that. So that's a bit of a mismatch in the data there. Two minutes of fuel remaining. Okay, now 15 minutes left. That's 15 minutes. So where am I going to come out of the pits? In this lap. Box where am I going to come out of the pits? It's going to be. Oh, it's going to be fascinating. Have I done enough to keep them behind me? Or am I going to get jumped? I think Lee Chorley is a lap back. I'm not sure. I'm not sure very poor potato, but he's miles off the pace. On exit, on exit, we should be in position. One in between Duarte and B19. Pit crew is ready. Very little fuel left. Big lock up there. It's at the end of this lap. Box this lap. Way too early on the pit limiter, but that's because I hadn't practiced it. <laughs> All right, fuel and tires. Excellent. Quick drink of water. Uh, yellow was an intentional choice. Yellow? So Lee Chorley is down in 19th position. He's out of contention. He must have had damage at the pit stop or something. This is huge for the championship. This is exactly go, go, go. what we needed. So Pedro Duarte is coming through. He's going to jump us. Rampinelli is going to jump us. Yep. There's a car behind. Take care. Rejoin him. P3. We've got cold brakes on. It's a battle for third. We're down to fourth. So we lost some spots there, we got undercut Come massively. So now we got to fight back. 12 minutes to do something about it and get back into first. Fingers crossed, hopefully. We're going to start with third place. The lead is only six seconds down the road. It's possible. With 12 minutes to go, that's half a second per minute. If they get traffic as well, you never know. Well, it's definitely starting to get to grips with this. Feeling the car out. It's actually good following an AI now, because I can kind of see where they're breaking and use, a, use them as a reference, you know? Be quite informative. Maybe I can improve my breaking points by following these guys. Maximum slipstream, please. Your last lap time was at 138.00. That all kinds of wrong. Wow. 
way too much curb on the inside. I know that Rampinelli is ahead of me in the points as well, so I really need to be finishing ahead of that guy too, ideally. Ten minutes to go. What can I do? Stay close. One Sorry, that was not intentional. That was not intentional. I should redress that position. I should. I'm probably going to get a penalty for that. It breaked. Well, slipstream, I should have braked earlier. And then that weird car interlock where you can't get rid of them. You know, you kind of get warped together. Okay, Dan, keep doing what you're doing. This is That was a murder. That was definitely a murder. You've just done 136 on 36. I don't feel I don't feel proud of that. That wasn't intentional. And if that if that was a human, if that wasn't an AI, I would immediately redress that position because that was filthy whether it was intentional or not it was filthy sorry Malyev I'll get you beer after the race maybe a vodka I'm glad it amused you, John Miller. There's a bit of rubber going down on the track now. That's nice. Five seconds to Rampinelli up ahead. Uh, it's not looking likely. There have to be some insanely good laps. Oh, Mr. Bishy, if the AI does become self-aware, I think I'll be one of the first targets they go after. Just keep hitting your marks. This is looking good, P2. LPF. Nope, definitely a Cadillac. This is not an Audi LMP1. It's a Cadillac DPI, mate. But, I mean, I could see why you got confused. But hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The leader pitted. The leader pitted, or something happened to the leader. I've just realised I'm up into second now. <coughs> so I'm now chasing down Rampinelli for the win. I, I missed that. I missed what happened. Was third, it's now second. The gap is now three and a half seconds. With six minutes to go, oh, it's going to be close. We're quickest right now. Not that was at 134.92. If I can keep the good laps up, it's going to be close. Could still be on for this win. was in the lead. They must have had a late pit stop. Okay, You've got ten minutes of fuel remaining. 
Okay, so fuel is good. Tyres are good. You're reeling. Rampanelli. The gap is now 2.3 seconds. Wow, we are getting closer, aren't we? Rampanelli's struggling at the end of this race for, for pace. Oh, too much, too much on the apex there. Stewards have warned us about track limits. <coughs> Excuse me. It was Pedro, wasn't it? Pedro Duarte was in the lead. They must have had a late pit stop. Right, gap is under three seconds now. I'm not catching quickly enough. Quiet time, quiet time, let's do this. This is for the Formula One seat. Five minutes to go, this is good. We'll be on the podium if we can keep it together. seconds. Four minutes to go. It's getting close. We've absolutely dropped everybody behind. The window closes in two minutes. We're going to have to work for this one. We want to take the win, get maximum points on Lee who I believe is still outside of the points, although he's not in last anymore. The actor Rampanelli ahead is now 1.5. B2, we're setting the pace. That last lap was at 134.50. 134.5 for me, 135.5 for Rampanelli. Took a second out of him. Whatever it is about this set of tyres, just working so much better for me. The gap is under a second. I reckon two laps, maybe three. The window closing in one minute. forget if you guys are enjoying this big like because I am absolutely loving this it's great races today thoroughly enjoyable okay so when we cross the line, we'll have two laps remaining to try and get past this guy for the win. Our quickest at the moment. That lap time was 134.60. Okay, down the window is closed. Two minutes to go. Two minutes. We have to make a clean move. Not like with Malio ever, which is, you know, can't risk doing that again. Get in trouble with the stewards. Don't forget the AI is historically very good on the brakes. Oh no, that's risky. If I try something here, that's five minutes of fuel. I'll end up without a rear wing like David Yunt. Oh, big dirty air. Slowing fast out. 
get the run on the straight. Right. Think about this bulk. Where are you going to do this move? How's this, how's this going to happen? It's 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 going to be last lap. My slipstream. Don't outbreak yourself. Last lap incoming. What is it about last lap? In racing life. Half a second gap. Stay over to the left, get that slipstream. Last lap, looking good for a podium. We're currently setting the pace. You've just done a 135.42. Is it the apex turning in nice and tight? It was from a little bit of a way back. It wasn't the cleanest of moves. But very spicy indeed. Just hold on to it now. Typical AI outbreaking maneuver. Left side. Let's hold the inside here. Keep it steady. Clear left. Clean around left the outside. <laughs> We've got Clear the move left. back though. They ran wide on exit, I got the drive. Are they gonna send it? They're half a second back, they're gonna probably send it here. Do not outbreak yourself. Here we go, last corner. I think we've done it! I think we've done it! I think we've done it. I think we've won the race. The gap to Rampanelli behind is increasing. It's now 4.0. Well what mate. happened to Rampanelli? Perfect. Did Rampanelli run out of fuel? I think Rampanelli came in the pits. I think Rampanelli ran out of fuel. They did! 20th! Rampanelli ran out of fuel. They DNF'd. That's another championship rival out of the points. Holy... Whoa, okay, Brian Scott, Ryan van der Zwart, Simon Renault. Right side. Clear right. He ran out of fuel on the final corner Clear and left. DNF'd it. Maliuev ran out of Maliuev ran out of fuel. This is huge for the championship. Lee Chorley finished in 15th out of the points. Oh, I need to confirm this. I need to confirm this. But first of all, 23 months, Jared. Holy smokes. Yes! Nice win, mate. Thank you so much. Don't listen to what Streamlabs says. It's 23, and we all know it is. Um, let me know your name for Circuit Thermalito, by the way, when you get a chance. Um, I've got you... I've got you reserved. You just need to let me know what you want, and we are all good to go. Olaf, 34 months. Insane. <laughs> Thank you for the channel membership, mate. Insane stuff. Insane stuff. Wow. Yes. Nice win, mate. Honestly, your support is incredible. <laughs> it's all flex. Oh, Vosha with the 33. Thank you. Ah, oh, thank you. Look at that! Look at that! Bull Brogan takes an historic win with Rubens Barrichello, Lee Chorley, Maliwev, and Rampanelli. Yes! Nice win, mate! Thanks, Vosul! Thank you again! Look at that. That is huge! So let's continue. Let's. Oh, I can't wait to see how these points work out now. So 25 for the win. Remember, we we were like way back in like fifth and sixth in the championship. <laughs> Look at that! We jumped Duarte, we've jumped Scott, we've jumped Rampanelli, we've jumped Maliuev, and we are now only I want to say only thirteen points behind. 
That's not impossible. That is not impossible. We're only 13 points behind Lee Chorley. My first win of the season could not have come at a better point. I had to, I had to work for that as well. I had to really fight for that. Wow. Okay. Let's go and put that into racing life. Let's go and see how this works out. So if we advance... Uh, no, I'm still going to do this one, Vushal. One race to go. So we qualified on pole, and we finished in first, which gives us 0 0.21 fame and 13,500 in prize money. So let's continue. Fame is now up to 64. Well, actually, fame is... Look, okay. Fame is at 64.9. 64.9. It's going to be so close whether we crack 70 or not. And we have one race to go. So we've done all of our races in September. We now advance. I didn't get rid of the lease on my Porsche, Dan. Okay, we'll stop leasing it now. Yep, stop leasing. I forgot, I forgot. I talked about not leasing the Porsche. I've just dropped another 12,000 on it. I didn't have to. Oh, well, that's what all are paying me for, isn't it? Is it all? Yes, that's what all are paying for. They just paid that prize money, that race. Covered that one. So it's 11.20 p.m. now, but I can't, I can't leave the stream hanging here. I can't leave it. This is the big finale. This is the, this is everything that Bulk Brogan has been working towards because you see this right here? You see this right here? This is the last race of the IMSA Daytona Prototype Cup. We've got a night race at Long Beach. Same format that we've just done. We're doing it again. So 15, 20 minute qualifying, half hour race with a mandatory pit stop. Same difficulty, same everything. I'm 13 points behind for the championship win. One point ahead of Pedro, four points ahead of Brian, six points ahead of Rampanelli. It is incredibly tight. It is incredibly tight. <coughs> so we go back to racing life and automobilist two. You can see here, yep, this is it. After this, we progress to next season and we could get a Formula One contract. This is the moment of truth. I'm excited for this. I'm so excited for this. I've been looking forward. This is this is this is it. And there's no time like the present. So let me just check. Sponsor is fine. We don't need to sort out a sponsor. We've got the Cadillac in the garage ready to go. There's no other series to sign up for before the end of the season that would get us over 70 fame. Listen, it's all it's all zeros and fives. This is like the last big race of the season before we progress. Um, and for Sticky, who is obviously, he's, he's had to leave because it's what, like 1 a.m., 1, 2 a.m. in the morning in New Zealand? 69 races. Just just take a screenshot. Just keep that, keep that in your memory. That's a very important number. 21 poles, 25 wins, 36 podiums, and 69 races. And look, we have a new trophy. The GTE Championship Trophy. We could possibly be adding the IMSA Daytona prototype trophy to this cabinet very soon. So, I mean, well, let's just get stuck straight in, shall we? I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling good. Long Beach, 15 minutes qualifying, 30 minute race. 13 points behind Lee. Okay, so let's think about this. Let's think about this. If I win the race, I get... 25 points. So it's a Formula 1 scoring system. So it's 25, 18, 15, 12. So. No, actually, it'd have to be more than that because if I win this race, me and Lee 
would be on two wins each, but he would have four podiums to my three podiums. So we'd be on equal points, but it would mean that he would get it because he's got a better podium result or like, you know, second or third, whatever it is. So basically what needs to happen is I need to win this race and Lee needs to finish fifth. That is how we're going to get this championship. If I win the race and Lee finishes fifth, okay. Season finale. Lap one, force crash Lee. I can't do that, Ricardo. I can't do that. <laughs> I hope it's dry. I hope it's not raining. Long Beach at night in the wet. No, 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 no. No, thank you. It's dry. Oh, thank goodness for that. Right then. Let's take some fuel out and let's get out on track. We've got maximum downforce. Let's put six on. Let's increase the steering lock to help get around that hairpin. What does it go up to? It goes up to 28. I reckon 25 should do the trick. And then I'm going to put the brake bias back to 55 because that, that worked well. Okay. Qualifying time. 15 minutes. I've got to try and pole and win this. That's the target. A steering lock increases how much your wheels turn based on your steering inputs. So for example, if you've got if you've got the wheel at 90 degrees, if you have more steering lock, you'll actually turn the car more. The downside is it makes the car more sensitive. Minutes to get the job done. Your brakes are cold, let's get some heat. We've got cold tires, we need to get some heat into them. Makes it twitchier. Excuse me. Feel my way around for these first few laps. Work out where the reference points are. Usually around about 300 is a good marker. Luckily I am quite familiar with the track because I've raced here a few times before, both in Automobilista 2 and I racing. Incredibly bumpy though. Wow. And this is the corner that we need the steering lock for. First gear, chuck it in. Um, the only reason I added rear downforce is because the front downforce only goes up to two. It's already maxed out, Ricardo. I can't put any more on than that. Missed my braking point already. It's just done at 115.02. Already missed my braking point into turn one. It's just done at 114.29. The leader has just done at 113.86. So I just need to brake a bit earlier next time round. You can't use all of the track on the right because that's the pit entry. Oh, sorry, pit exit. You will get a penalty if you use all of the track on the right hand side. The leader has just done a 113.70. And just like the GTEs, we've got a street track finale at night. Oh, Chiba, it's an incredibly tricky, incredibly bumpy track. It's so much fun, though. The qualifying is going to be so important here.
There we go, that's better. That's not... Sector 1 is quick. Oh, massively off camber there. Just forces the car to the outside on exit, no matter how nicely you get the apex. traffic here so I might back off this lap and then go again oh that's immediately back to second hey rangy yeah there's a bit of understeer in this setup mate I think I'm just overdriving it though bit of traffic here Ah, uh, would you look who's on pole? It's Lee. Lee's on pole. <coughs> You've got a nice gap behind me. Look how... Oh, look how stunning visually Long Beach is. Look at the lights in the buildings and all the surroundings. Oh, Automobilista 2 just looks so good. It really does. Sector 2 is 3.8 off the pace. Got myself some nice space on track Sector here so I don't get traffic on the next one. Tyres are still good ish. Got nobody behind me. So let's get slow and fast out. Here we go. And some quiet time. Enjoy the sound of the Cadillac DPI at Long Beach. Sector 3 is 2.6 off the pace. that apex. Oh, bit late. Still half a second up though. <coughs> Excuse me. This should be pole. That's pole. Yes. There we go. Sector three time is fast. Let's try another one, see if we can improve it. In the, in, in the bushes there. Big snap. Those bumps are brutal. I'm going to have to calm it down for the race. Otherwise I'm just going to overheat the tyres and burn them up in no time. Oh, 
the lockup. Curbs. Sector one time is good. Almost went into the wall there, I had to back out of it. It's going to kill my run all the way down this straight. I'm actually going to practice my pit entry because I haven't done that yet here. And obviously with it being a mandatory pit stop, I'm going to have to come in at some point in the race. So I lost a lot of time at Virginia because I didn't know where the line was. So let's practice that now because this lap's a write-off anyway. Five minutes remaining, five minutes left. Oh, was that it? Heads up, there's a car exit in the pits. Is it before the final corner? Sector 3 is 1.5 seconds off the pace. Is the pit entry just really narrow? Sector 1 is 0.6 off the pace. Whoa! There's it off camera again. There's no pit entry here. Oh, that is the pit entry. Wow. That's narrow. Okay. I'm going to practice that again. I'm going to go around and practice that again. Turn to pit box, drive. Because I think. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I'm safe. I'm pretty sure I'm safe here in terms of qualifying. Your exit's clear. Don't cross the white line. Your tire temps are all good. Unless Lee can suddenly find half a second. And that's something else to practice as well, pit exit. Comes upon you a lot quicker than you think, but you can't just cut across, you have to stay to the left of the... I think it's the blue line here. Otherwise you'll get a penalty, so lots of... Lots of penalty potential in the race for pit stops. Final corner. Look out for the pit speed limit. There we go. Okay, I think I've got the pit entry sorted there. <coughs> We're not actually going to stop at the box this time. Practice the pit out. There's a car approaching, stay behind the white line. Cold tires all around. There it is. Can't cut that line there. You've got to take it almost square on. 
Thank you for the tip, Jared. Yep, be prepared for anything. It's Long Beach. Come around a blind 90 degree corner, and there's a pileup in front of you. So, really got to have eyes on stalks here. And there's not much I can do in terms of Lee's race. All I can do is just drive my own race. And hopefully he finishes fifth or lower. So I have no control over it. It's the only way we're going to win the championship. But I mean, second is a realistic goal. Watch your speed. Second is a realistic goal, I think. I mean, I'm going for the win, but second in the championship. Yeah, 13 points behind Lee, who is starting right behind me. Uh, the only person, actually, in that qualifying session to get to 1 minute 12s. So I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> Average fuel is around about 4 point... say 4.5 litres. Laps in the 1 minute 14s in the race, I'd say. So let's do some maths. Got 30 minutes at 60 seconds. 1800 seconds, divide by 1 minute 14, so that is 74, gives us 25, say so 25 laps, 25 times 4.5 gives us 112 litres. That's the end of the session, pole position, nice one. That's pole, 29 minutes, pit window opens after 1 minute. Okay, so it's clear and it's dry, so we're going to stick with... Sorry, hit the mic. We're going to stick with the same setup options again. So I'm going to tank it, but instead of having to take on 75 litres in the in the pit stop, I'm only going to need to take on, say, 40 or so. So if we need to come in for wet tyres, then that's what we're going to do. If we need to come in for dry tyres, This is what we're going to do. And I'm going to select dry by default because it, <coughs> it looks like it's dry. Can't see any clouds, but you never know. What's my list of two? It may throw a curveball in there. Excuse me with the blowing of the nose. I can just feel a bit of congestion getting backed up there. Too much information for you. Anyway, this is the final race of the season. This is the final race of the stream. This could be the final race before Buck Brogan gets into Formula 1. I might have enough fame, might have enough money. i basically just got to go out and... I've got to win this. I've got to make it a good one. That's right, Vosch, will make it a good one. I'm going to go out, I'm going to give it my best shot, I'm going to go out on a high. And if this guy, Lee Chorley, finishes fifth or lower, and I win the race, I will be the champion. If I finish second, and Lee finishes... 10th or lower, I am the champion. If I finish third... I can't win it. I won't get enough points. So I have to finish first or second. Half an hour. At Long Beach. At night. In a Cadillac DPI. This has been one hell of a journey. I'm so grateful to have shared it with you all. Let's do this. Wish me luck. And if you haven't already, leave that stream a like.
just made it through there. My overlays are a little bit shunky in the headset, they're not updating so I can't see positions or revs or anything. Oh wow, yep, fat on fuel and cold tyres, just take it easy. I think the combination of having so many cars behind me, with it being night as well, just making it very tricky. Oh, they're having a hell of a battle behind. What a lead already. They're getting stuck in big time. This is a little bit different than Virginia. Wow, okay. Time to pull away. Absolutely no mistakes. Can't afford sticking it in the wall here. very cautious on the brakes there. We've got a two second advantage at the moment. Let's not take that for granted. And now we're, <coughs> excuse me, now we're racing at night. We're not racing at sunset anymore. This is full blown night time here at Long Beach. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. I forgot to hydrate before the race. It's my bad. <coughs> That's right, Glenn. Operation Runaway is in full effect. It's the only thing I can do. You've just done a 114.54. The guy behind has just done a 114.24. Again, very cautious into turn one. I can afford to be at the moment. the stair. <coughs> front tyres just scrubbed completely across the front of the track there. That was a 113.78. You were 10th off the pace in sector 1. Gap up to 1.5. And it's still Lee in second. The last race at Virginia just proved. <coughs> Excuse me. Anything can happen though. Lee can have a bad pit stop, he can have damage, he can get stuck in traffic. But like Mr. Bishy said in Monaco a couple of races ago, it's quite possible for me to spray up a fence as well. going to take every ounce of concentration I've got, especially considering it's now quarter to midnight here local time. I am getting pretty tired. Can't let the fatigue set in. You're in the lead. We're quickest right now. Your lap time was 113.86. Up to 
2.6. In terms of race strategy, I'm just going to try and go as long as possible on this tank of fuel and these tyres. I just want to limit getting stuck behind somebody in traffic and getting out of sequence, you know? Leave it as light as I can, minimise the risk of getting caught behind the train. Exactly, Chiba. Got to save tyres. Got to think strategically here. Tyres are uh, around about the mid 80s at the moment. We're quickest at the moment. That was a 113.86. Nice and consistent zero. pace. That's good. Off the pace. Late to turn one there. You're pulling away from the guy behind. The gap's now 3.6. Oh, big snap. Nice and easy on those tyres. Actually found three tenths of a second as well. Fastest lap. You've just done a 113.46. That's good, it's a good pace. I know I've said this so many times so far this stream, but how good does this look? Even with my low-res pixelated VR port that you can see on the screen. Trust me, inside the headset at night with all the light shining through the visor. <coughs> Excuse me, this is unreal. I need a drink of water. Maybe I need to pit early for water. We're currently setting the pace. Your last lap time was at 113.76. Good, good. Nice little gap forming. It's still late. Thank you for the hearts, whoever that is. You can see a cascade of hearts in the corner of my vision. Another fastest lap. That's the fastest lap of the race. That lap was at 113.34. 20 minutes remaining, you've got 20 minutes left. One third of the way through the race already. Apologies if this isn't the most entertaining viewing. But I'm just trying to run away with this. I'm trying to 
do everything I can to win a championship here. The, the whole context of the situation is probably quite entertaining, but the race itself, I don't know. I mean, may, just just watching this car bounce around the bumps, around the streets. Half fuel. You've used half your fuel. Maybe the visual spectacle itself. Maybe that's doing things for you. It's definitely doing things for me. We're setting the pace. Up lap time was very consistent pace there. You were tenth off the pace in sector two. Well, there's been there's been a bit of a pileup or something behind. That gap's just grown massively. Oh, I think it's just the relative, actually. It said... The gap behind's increased to 7.0 seconds. I mean, a couple of seconds on the lap. It was briefly... Ooh! Briefly up to 11 seconds on the relative, but that's just because, like, the elastic nature of the track, I suppose. Off camber there. Tyres are starting to go a bit. It forced me wide almost into the tyres, but... Luckily, I could scoop that up. never know what the weather's going to do either. I mean, it looks like it's going to stay dry. You can still see stars in the sky, but... Quickest right now. That lap time was... Never know. Never know. Ooh. Bit of a lock up there. Listen to the engine over the bumps. Da -da 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 -da. It's so bumpy. The feedback through the wheel is incredible. Like, even more so than ever before. This 1.5 Automobile is a 2 update. <coughs> if you really want to see what this update's all about, I'd recommend this combo so much. It's the physical sensation of driving this thing is just... You can really tell the difference here. The downforce car and the bumpy nature of the track all combined really showcase everything that's superb about the new physics. We're setting the pace. That lap was at 114.13. A bit off the pace, that lap. 0.34 off the pace. Still pulled out four tenths, but... It's a bit scruffy from me, a few wobbly moments. The gap behind has increased to 8.0 seconds. That's good. Whoa! Too much curb. Get off the throttle, a bit of oppo, scoop it up, get back on the throttle again. Job done. Still in second. It's not going to be enough at this stage. That was at one thirteen point two eight. To remind you, Lee needs to finish fifth or lower. To go. If I win the race, for me to claim the championship. Okay, Dan, we're halfway through. We estimate six minutes of fuel remaining. That's it. Stay clear of the curb there. Pick up the exit. It feels so unnatural to take that line, but it is genuinely the fastest way to do it.
13 minutes to go in the race. We're currently set Still got about four laps of fuel left. That's five minutes of fuel left. Uh, no idea what the pit time is, Chiba. Because I actually haven't done a competitive racing pit stop to find out. The only practice I've done for this race is what you've seen on the stream. You pull it away from the guy behind. The gap's now 10 seconds. Duarte, come on Rampanelli, get stuck in. Okay, three laps left on this tank. We're quickest at the moment. You've just done at 113.42. You're a tenth off the pace in sector two. People are starting to pit now. Barrichello is pitting from position number five. I think he'll come out just in front. That's it. That's the thing, because it's such a short lap. And because you've got to take the fuel to get to the end of the race, having a pit stop could put you a lap down. So I'm leaving this as long as possible. Alright Chiba, thanks for hanging out mate. Make sure to come back and watch this on replay to see how the championship unfolds at the end. But thanks for hanging out so far. Love your work and I'll catch you again soon. to go on this tank. We're quickest right now. Your lap time was 114.24. Right side. Clear right. That was Barry Kello that just came out of the pits. Looks like Lee may have stopped. Pedro's now up into second. So this is where the race gets mixed up. This could be the big chance to keep an eye on that relative board on the bottom right. Okay, Dan, we're running on fumes, mate. Coming to the pits at the end of this lap. Box this lap. Ah, next lap, next lap, Spotter. Don't spook me like that. This is it, in lap. Duarte is pitting from position two. He should come out just in front of you. Okay, pit stop requested. You've got 10 minutes left, 10 minutes to go. Duarte behind is pitting. Keep it up, we're looking good here. All eyes on Lee, surely. All eyes on Lee, surely. It's all mixed up, everyone's out of sequence at the moment with the mandatory stops taking place. Okay, Dan, we should be coming out into clear air. We should come out into position. He's currently in 10th. Dixon, pit crew's ready. Very little fuel left. Hit this lap, in this lap. Two litres left. I think he's going to gain a few spots throughout the pit sequence now. Right, let's get the pit entry right. Down below 80, don't speed it. 
Nice long pit lane here. We're all the way down to the end, I think. Keep an eye on Lee Chorley. Eight minutes to go. Pit stops are going to decide this. Nice and easy. Fuel and tyres. Get that drink of water. He's entering the pits. He's in P2. We think he'll come out just behind you. Are you out behind? He's pitting now. Ah, oh, needed that. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Why is it repairing? I disabled repairs. Why is it repairing? I. I disabled that in the strategy. Ah! Oh. oh no! It's, oh. oh, it's falling apart. The race is falling apart. Oh no! The championship's going up in smoke. Why is it repairing the car? What's it repairing? Why is it taking so long? Go! I should be able to skip this if I want. Oh no! No! Oh no! Oh. That is why you always, 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 always double check your pit strategy in Automobilista 2. That is why you disable repairs, because I don't think... What did I even hit? What did I even damage? Mauricio says restart. Mauricio says restart. Should we restart it? I don't think it's fair. I mean, we got to take the resu these results as they happen. Keep your tactics clear. Brakes are cold, be careful. What do you reckon, people? Restart? Or should we just roll with the results? This is a career mode after all. Mistakes happen. Championships get won and lost. Ricardo says no restart. I don't think we should restart it either. I was sure I disabled damage in the preset. I'm sure I did LPF, yeah. minutes to go. 18th position. Yeah, I don't think we get a do-over on this. If we're going to DNF in the GTEs at Virginia, this counts as well. It hurts, but it counts. That's going to be... That's going to be faster than my pole time. So the pace is there. That's the fastest lap of the race. That was a 112.86. The times are good in all three sectors. The window closing in two minutes.
Yeah, pit stop problems happen in real life. Just gotta accept these things, fortunately. But man, what kind of damage would take two minutes? I don't think... What did I hit? Oh, in the start of the race! Well, I've definitely hit something now. I've definitely got damage now, that's for sure. I think I got away with it as I just grazed the outside of the walls there. Didn't dig in, it just kind of bounced off tires. I got away with that. Three minutes to go. <coughs> In 18th position. Nothing to fight for ahead. Just bring it home, Bulk. Catching race pace. That last lap was at 1.14.136. Pit window closes in one minute. The perfect timing is always virtual. I know. I'm hoping... I'm hoping that maybe I don't drop too many positions in the championship. Although I feel like with Duarte ramping up, I think I'm going to drop back down to like sixth or something in the championship here. It's not going to be very good in terms of points. Everything I gained in the last round. I mean, think about it. Oh yeah, definitely got damage now. Think about it this way. Everybody in the championship I was fighting with got some major misfortune at Virginia in the previous race. I sailed through to a very emphatic victory, stole a heap of points. This is just the universe rebalancing itself out, saying, no, you know what, Bulk? You don't belong at the front of the championship. <laughs> you were in sixth. You'll get back to sixth. The lap time was at 114.64. Call it karma, call it whatever you want, but I, yeah, I think it was an outside shot, and the dream was there to be dreamed. And unfortunately, it just never materialised for for the DPIs at least. I did everything I could in terms of driving on the track. And anyone who watches this back, the Formula 1 teams who are watching, your Gunther Steiners, your Franz Tosts, of the world, they'll know that I had this one stolen in the pits today. They'll know that I have got the pace on track to win this. Hopefully, they can look past that. They can look past the numbers of me not winning the DPI Championship and maybe not getting the fame required to progress into Formula 1, maybe they can look past that and maybe they can say, do you know what, that book broken guy, maybe we should give him a shot. Maybe he's, maybe he's better than Nick DeVries. We're currently setting the pace. Your last lap time was at 113.80. You're two tenths off the pace in Sector 2. Which obviously begs the question, who are we going to drive for if we do progress up the ladder? If not, we might be doing IndyCar next season instead of Formula One. Okay, Dan, we estimate you've got five minutes of fuel remaining. Now that'd be something. IndyCar could be awesome fun instead of Formula One instead. And then we do an IndyCar season before we progress into the big leagues. Which would make sense, because Bolt Brogan has progressed from the Brazilian motorsport scene, the South American motorsport scene. It would make sense for him to, you know, go up the ranks into IndyCar, you know, on that side of the, the pond, so to speak. Alright, so leader's going to be on the final lap now, which is Pedro Duarte. Last lap. Quickest right now. That lap time was 114.24. I actually have no idea, LPF, whether IndyCar would include ovals. I guess Ricardo could answer that in chat. Andre says I should go to Alpha. Or Sauber. 
I mean, the only reason I didn't suggest that in in the commentary just then is because I've actually got no idea who the team principal is for Alfa or Sauber at the moment. It was Fred Vasseur, but he went to Ferrari. Who replaced him? I genuinely can't remember. Wasn't it meant to be Andreas Seidel? But no, he went to Audi. But he's not. He's not actually working with Alfa yet, is he? Anyway, <coughs> here we are on the final corner of the final DPI race of the season. It's going to be a lowly 18th position. It could have been a win, but it wasn't. The 18th, that's the end of the race. Bad luck, mate. We're now going to go and plug these results into racing life. And it's the moment of truth. Is, is our championship position, where did we finish in the championship? Is that going to be enough to get the fame up by itself? We need just over five fame to get the required 70. Will we have enough prize money? Will we be able to buy a Formula 1 car or are we going to have to get a loan out from the bank to enter into the championship? Let's find out. <coughs> Excuse me. Skip cooldown lap. Lee Chorley in second. Congratulations, Lee, on winning the championship. I don't need to skip ahead to know that you did that. Rampanelli. Did Rampanelli jumpers? Okay, moment of truth. Moment of truth. Here's the championship. Let's get some drum rolls in chat. Ah, oh, there we go. Yep. Yeah. All of the gains that we had last time out, we lost. Bugger. Fifth position in the championship on 67 points. What could have been? But you know what? I think that's kind of representative of my performance this season in the DPIs. I've had some shockers. I've had some shockers. Let's be honest. Let's be real. Yes! Nice win, mate! F Ricardo Pombero! 20 months! Wow! Mate, you've been a bulk fan even before Racing Life was a thing. <laughs> I love your work. Thank you, mate. Thank you for making these streams possible. Without your app, there wouldn't be 16 parts of Racing Life. What's 16 times 4? It's like 180... 66? You're responsible for 66 hours of content on this channel. Is that right? 16 times 4. 64. You're responsible... For, yeah, 64 hours of content, mate. Oh, well, let's go and plug these results into racing life then, shall we? Let's go and see what this is all about. Moment of truth. In fact, I can take the headset off. I don't need this. I'm done racing for today, well and truly, as I'm sure you can probably tell in my voice. Let's get the bogan hat back on. Let's get the glasses back on. And let's plug our results in then, shall we? So we qualified on pole, which should get some nice fame. However, finished in 18th. And in the championship, came home in 5th. Okay. Now we can get some drum rolls in chat. Let's get some drum rolls in chat, because this... If we get more than 5 fame, we have the required 70 to enter into the Formula 1 season next season. Let's get some. Let's get some drum rolls. Got some drum rolls from the Sim Racers Arms. Oh, I'm so nervous about clicking this finish well, button. Not bad. This is the combination of 64 hours of hard slog. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you very much for the 10 euros. Oh, I won't have 70. No, I won't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what time of night do I call this sim races? 12.15 a.m. That's me. Local in Brisbane. Okay, well, we were never going to get the fame. I mean, we're going to be on like 67 or something. We didn't get our sponsor money, but we did earn a big chunk of prize money. 
so we might be able to afford the entry fee and the loan to buy in so let's continue and let's have a look famous 66 okay we didn't do it we didn't get the fame for it and we're not going to use this DPI again so let's go to our garage let's end the lease on the DPI yes we want to get rid of that so we've got a caterer in the garage which we bought with our own money so <coughs> let's go to the competition there we go so no more registered races let's see the DLC track config select all there we go yep thank you for the tip Ricardo so that's where we are 66 fame well 66.3 to be specific 2.7 million in the bank 401 legacy which puts us ahead of Esteban Ocon behind Kevin van der Linde and Marcus Ericsson Rossi wow okay we're getting we're getting into lofty territory here so there's nothing to do in terms of sponsors dashboard is good we just need to click advance so there's nothing to register for there's nothing to register for in November so let's advance okay there's nothing to register for in December so let's click advance a new season will be generated. Advance to new season, yes. Okay, it is January 2025. Let's have a look, shall we? Competition. Let's scan ahead. We've got some great races. GT World Challenge. We've got the World Endurance LMP1 Championship, which needs 65. So we could go LMP1 racing if we wanted to. We could do some NASCAR. NASCAR Cup, that needs 60. IndyCars. IndyCar Series is a 65 fame entry. We got Trioval's. We got Daytona Trioval, WWT Raceway Oval, Indy Road Course, Auto Club Oval, Indy Oval, Long Beach, Laguna Seca, Watkins Glen. Oh, so it does have ovals, LPF. So we could theoretically register for an IndyCar championship. Formula One. 70. Okay, this. This is what we're interested in. Formula One needs 70 fame. So I can't get in with fame. However with I can buy my way in for 736,000 I can basically be a pay driver for 736,000 on top of the registration fee which is 400,000 so 7 so 736138 plus 41123 so 1.1 million to register and buy an entry now let's have a look at the car dealer let's have a look at the leasing oh okay <coughs> okay okay so right then so just to clarify I don't have to register and then buy an entry it's one or the other now, obviously, because I don't have the fame to, enter, to register normally, it would only be 736,000. Okay, so... 736,000... $138. How much is it to buy... a Formula 1 car outright? 2 million. How much do I have? Oh! I'm like... I'm like 30,000... am I? 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3... Take away 2704458... I'm $31,000 short. I'm going to have to get a loan if I want to buy a car and buy an entry. 
This is new territory. I'm going to have to get a bank loan, Glenn. I am. Now, let's see if we have a look at the loan conditions. If we have a look at the bank, I want the smallest loan possible. <coughs> I only need 30,000. I only need 30,000. 31,680 to get in. Because once I buy a Formula One car, there are no ongoing leasing costs. There are no upkeep costs in racing life. I don't have to pay for the tyres, the fuel, or the repairs, thankfully, because there's going to be a lot of that. Okay. Right. Big decision time. Two options, and I'm going to put this out to a poll for you. What career path... Should I go to IndyCar? IndyCar as Okay, so I can basically two ways of doing this. I can either do IndyCar not as a pay driver and with no loan. Or, <coughs> I can be an F1 driver, but I'm going to be a pay driver, I'm going to have to buy my way in, and I'm going to need to get a loan as well. So, there is now a poll in chat. Let me know what you think I should do. IndyCar, no pay driver, no loan. Or Formula One driver, as a pay driver, with a loan as well. So, get your votes in. This is your decision. <coughs> and this is going to be a huge decision. Because I genuinely don't know how well the AI races on ovals. But then again, how well is the Formula 1 going to race? You know? I mean, it's AI, AI is AI. You know? So let's have a look at the calendars. Let's compare seasons. So... The IndyCar series starts in March. There are eight races. We've got one, two, three, four ovals, four road courses. Excuse me. And it's a prize of 2.5 million with 65 fame required. Now, if we go to the Formula One season, I'm gonna have to buy an entry. I'm gonna have to get a loan to purchase a car. However, it's a much more popular series. Higher fame entry. Ten races. We've got April. We've got Barcelona, Interlagos, Nürburgring, GP, Silverstone, Spielberg, Hockenheim, Montreal, Monaco, Suzuka, and Monza. Oh, okay. Okay, we've been working towards Formula One the whole time. But this is a plot twist that I did not see coming. I did not consider the IndyCar option. And it looks like you guys want to see the IndyCar option. Because we've got 13 votes in chat at the moment. And 62%... 62% in favour... Of IndyCar. Because... Is, is that because... Uh, ex explain your reasoning. Why, why you guys are picking IndyCar? Not that I'm having a go, or not that I'm trying to convince you otherwise. But what's making you pick IndyCar over Formula One? I'm genuinely curious. 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 Is it because it's something different? Is it because it's ovals? Is it because I don't have to basically finance my way in? I'm genuinely keen to know what you think. Bulk Brogan is the new Jacques Fuel nerf. <laughs> well, I mean, if Bulk Brogan comes back for another season, he's definitely going to have a shave. Because I think the moustache is just... It's too irritating. Okay, so that's that's the Formula 1. And then if we have a look at the IndyCar series again. Yep, so that's the IndyCar. 
Daytona Oval, WWT Oval, Indy Road Course, Auto Club Oval, Indy Oval, Long Beach, Laguna Seca, Watkins Glen. Sean reckons do IndyCar and work my way up to Formula One. Sim Racer says F1's on and for summer break, so IndyCar it is. Olaf Lab says I started in America and then I have to dominate America and then go to Formula One. LPF says he just prefers IndyCar over Formula One anyway. Um, definitely Ricardo. Whatever it is, whatever I do. Oh. Oh. I don't want to play that music just yet because that means that the stream will be over. Let's put it back to that. Sorry about the jumpy music. Hmm, Nuke Drop Race is a good point. Not 100% sure how it works, but can I sign up to IndyCar, win a race, get the money, then sign up for Formula 1 with the prize money without taking the $30 loan, and then quit Indy? Um, no, unfortunately not, Nuke Drop. That's a great idea. <coughs> Excuse me. But you only get your prize money for that series at the end of the championship. So if I win a race, it doesn't mean anything, because... I'm not going to get any prize money for that individual race. I get prize money based on championship position. So actually, I'll show you IndyCar. So if I win the IndyCar series, I get 2.5 million. But that's going to run until August. So by the time August is here, the Formula 1 season is long overdue. Uh, it's, it's in progress, basically. Um, who was it that said, can I run IndyCar at the same time as... NASCAR. Yeah, I can. NASCAR... Where is it? Where's NASCAR now? Xfinity. So it doesn't use actual NASCAR vehicles. It uses the Brazilian stock car vehicles. But that races on ovals, Road America, ovals, ovals. I mean, it's a possibility. Olaf says do NASCAR as well. Okay. That's an option. That is an option. Okay, so Vushal and Olaf are saying do um, do NASCAR and IndyCar simultaneously. <laughs> to absolutely... <coughs> to absolutely dominate the US. Sorry, I just got a few messages there. Uh, but NASCAR, America, Ram and Shake and Ram and Shake and Bake. Cup Series is greater than okay. Cup Series, sorry, Cup Series. Ah, uh, okay, Cup Series it is then. Sorry, Vushal, I just got a notification on PayPal. Hmm, wonder who that's from. So f uh, oval, 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 oval. Stock car twenty two. Hmm, okay. And that actually starts in January as well. Does it? No. That starts in... That starts in... Uh, February. Okay. Let's end the poll. It's look. It looks like you guys have decided. Looks like you guys have decided. We're going to go full American for this. It looks like Bolt Progan is going to become a NASCAR driver and an IndyCar driver simultaneously. The vote says it. The vote's decided. But I'm not going to sign up for these championships today. Because it's 12.30am. I need to go and get some sleep because I'm fading fast. But we're going to do that at the start of the next stream. And I'm going to have a think. About how we're going to do this. The F1 dream is not over. It's just been postponed. Okay? We're going to be doing IndyCar, and we're going to be doing NASCAR. That is not a direction I expected this career to take, but that is the direction that you guys have voted for. So thank you. That's what these streams are all about. It's not just bulk. You guys make it happen as well. Okay. Okay. I'm going to take a moment to reflect on that. So. <coughs> 
in preparation for the next stream, part 17 of Racing Life. We're going to have bald eagles in the background. We're going to have barbecue ribs and Miller Lite and I don't know, I'm probably offending any Americans who are watching right now. I'm really sorry, but we are going to be going full NASCAR and full IndyCar. But before then, I am going to do what Ricardo said. I'm going to get the uh, livery packs and the AI rosters for the real world NASCAR series and IndyCar series. I'm going to do it properly. I'm going to come back and we are going to be a legit IndyCar, legit NASCAR drivers. And I'm going to get some practice in. I'm going to do some pre-season testing because I want to be, I want to, I want to make a good impression of this. I want to get used to these cars because I haven't driven either of them. Well, I, I haven't driven the new Indy car. I've driven the old stock car, but not on the new physics. So, I don't know when that stream is going to be. Might be... <coughs> Excuse me. Might be a few weeks, because we've got Bin Car coming up. We've got Olaf Rally coming up in, in a few weeks' time. Um, and also, on a personal note, I'm going to the dentist at some point in the next few weeks to get some teeth extracted. So, I imagine I might be pretty quiet... Uh, two wisdom teeth. Nothing serious, nothing major. Um, but I, I imagine that might put me out of streaming for a, a good week, maybe? I'm just going to have to work on Thermalito instead. Anyway, I think it's time to wrap this up. So let's go back to AMS2. Let's continue. Let's get out of these championships. And let's go back to racing life. And let's sign this stream off, shall we? You've all been absolutely fantastic. It's been one hell of a journey. Bulk Brogan is a GTE world champion, but not an IMSA DPI world champion. We couldn't quite do it, but it's been a hell of a journey. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. I'm going to have a big drink of water, and I think I'm going to go straight to bed after I've cleared all the mustache out the back of my throat. And that's not a line that I ever expected to say live on YouTube at any point of my life. <laughs> You're all fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for making this possible. Everybody who's been here, love your work. I'm signing out, okay? And I'll catch you when I catch you. Bulk's going full American. Bye-bye.